Hello, I'm Dan McDowell, longtime professional broadcaster. Why subscribe to our Patreon podcast? Well, perhaps you support our struggle to get out from under the oppressive thumb of the man. Or, objectively, if you sign up at patreon.com slash the dumb zone, you will get the two episodes per week that are available on all podcast platforms, like this one, plus an additional two episodes each week that are exclusive to Patreon. So subscribing on Patreon gets you four episodes per week. Oh my, what a bargain. Now, on to today's program. Don't hug me. Just finished my feature. What's a feature, Daddy? A feature is Hollywood industry jargon for a screenplay. You know what motion pictures are? Human centipede. Human centipede, yes, Shana. You remember we watched that film? I ate the poo-poo. That's right, they did eat the poo-poo. And you know what? Those people didn't just make that up on their own. Someone had a right that they ate poo-poo. That's what a feature is. That's what a screenplay is. That's what your dad just did. That movie's gross. Oh, big surprise. My son got scared by a horror film. <laughs> Shana didn't have a problem with it. Shane, you like when they eat the caca, right? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, at the end of the show, you'll learn why that was the open. Okay. Are you excited? Very. I'm Dan McDowell. I'm Jake Kemp. I'm Blake Jones. And we are very happy to be here. We're excited. Uh, what a good show we have for you today. It's just a good day. Don't bullshit you know. people. What? Tell us what's coming up. Coming up on today's program. I don't know. I see a lot of cowboy stuff, football stuff. It's football season, guys. We can stop watching all that baseball. (laughs) Did you see last night, bro? I'd like to play some audio. No, they rained out two nights ago. Well, they resumed in the fourth inning yesterday. Oh, they did? They they played one and a half. I saw Rangers media lamenting the fact that nobody goes to White Sox games. Dave Raymond's picture was pretty crazy. <laughs> I but did I, see the uh, Jankowski catch. Well, then when we asked you, did you see what happened last oh, night? Oh, is that what you meant? A guy going over the wall no, to save a walk We weren't talking about Jonah Heim striking out. <laughs> <laughs> or like a... Marcus Simeon dribbler to short. Like, this is one of the best <laughs> catches of the year. And he's like, no, what happened? Uh, but yeah, no. Yeah, especially <laughs> the angle on it, the glove it turn incredible. backwards. Yeah. Is he a keeper? We'll do that in the back half of the show. Hey, stay tuned. Yeah. Well, today we broadcast from high atop my garage. By the way, this garage. Did you notice the roof? I noticed that I felt safer, more secure, and it looked nicer. Qualys Roofing. Look at that. Was out here. The great Qualys Roofing. We've had uh, we've been out to their place before. And so I thought, well, you know what? I'll invite them out to my place. And they paid us something to be out at their place. And then we paid them a lot more to be out at my place. <laughs> <laughs> but really... Um, Let's just say the insurance company paid a lot more because they dealt with the insurance company, and uh, they're awesome. So what is it? Q-U-A-L-I-S, roofing. Um, so, yeah, they were here the last two days. Actually, it was mostly done in one day, and the next day they just came back to make sure everything was cleaned up. And the uh, weird thing is you didn't, like, remark right away. When you walked in. Didn't look like a construction site. That's the, that's the thing. Because if you were here Tuesday, you would have said they're going to be cleaning this up for weeks. Uh, yet somehow, uh, maybe that's part of the Qualys game, is that they they say the, the cleanup is very important as well. Because you wouldn't want to be reminded every day that you just got a new roof. Anyway, you know what I was really surprised about? This is probably not in the copy. <laughs> For the uh, impromptu live spot that we're kind of doing now, mm-hmm. they they put a new roof on the shed, <laughs> like the little shed next to our house. Yeah, that's solid. While we're here, the shed is painted the same color as the house. And nice. They're just. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? They're like, yeah, yeah, we do it all, bro. Yeah. Then they uh, they roofed my car. Mm-hmm. It was it was incredible. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I have a new. I thought it was weird that Bodie was on my head. Bodie was walking around with a little mobile roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> you gotta stay. Head. You gotta stay. Uh, stay dry in this. You know these wet times. Uh, well, no, I think the point is this is the first time you've ever done something when you're supposed to do it. What do you mean? Well, because typically, like our power goes out or something, and you're like, I should buy a power wall. Right. Uh, it's like trying to go buy like a ski jacket in November. Not the time. You don't want to be uh, like putting out paint buckets in your house and then thinking, hey, maybe I need a new roof. I'm going to do it now, Dan. Qualys Roofing does roofing services, roof replacement, and installation. I've seen that. Roof repair. So you just got one little problem. Storm restoration services and roof maintenance. Apparently, a lot of things that have to do with uh, the roof. Mm-hmm. That seems to kind of be the... That's their bit. ...tie that binds. <laughs> uh, so don't believe us, though. Well, you should believe us, but you could go check out their reviews on internet. Mm-hmm. Qualys Roofing. Hundreds of five-star reviews. Oh, not just four of them? Um, apparently, hundreds. Wow. Seven decades of combined industry experience. Anyway, Qualys Roofing and Construction. They're great. You want to maybe give out a contact there? Oh, go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> Q-U-A-L-I-S? I'll just text Brian. GC.com. QualysGC.com. It's 817-500-9008. Oh, okay. And uh, they'll give you a free roof inspection and a free Dumb Zone shirt. You have them out. Oh, um, the are they doing one. the other thing? The the subby? I don't know about that one. I think they are. Okay. Uh, I talked to Brian the other day. He's like, yeah, we're giving... What were they giving when we were out there? They were giving like a year subscription if somebody did something, uh, signed up Yeah, or whatever, we should but, probably nail this down before the next... Well, why don't you just call uh, them and say, hey, what are you guys giving? <laughs> That's not enough. You know? But at least a shirt, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Like I said, if I want to call him, I text Brian. Well, yeah. So you could text Brian or you could do it the way Jake said. Yeah. Because Jake's like, oh, you got to do things by the rules. <laughs> yep. It's not the way I roll, guys. Mm-hmm. Fast and loose. So thanks, Quality. Anyway, so the uh, the uh, garage is now secure. It has a, a roof. Hopefully uh, no more. Also the whole house. Wasps. They didn't just like just do the garage here. and the shed. But it wouldn't have been beyond the pale that you would have requested only having the roof over your apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's what we need the generator for. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so we're high atop my garage because we have a sit-in today. And he is Matt. Are we allowed to give your last name, Matt? Uh, sure, why not? Because I see online you will use a different last name. Is that true? No. Okay, what's your last name? Rosenbloom. Okay, I thought it was uh, something with a W. Um, no, his real name is not Wamsgams from, from Succession. Well, I again, think. he used that online. Yeah, okay, but I don't think anybody... This is Matt. He's our sit-in today. <laughs> yeah, hey, everybody. Thanks. Hi, Matt. Yeah, I... A lot of controversy with Matt off the air. <laughs> it's true. A lot of discussion about whether he sent an email or not. Did did we confirm this? You were, you were looking for us. Uh, yeah. We got you here, though. Yeah, it was great. And, yeah. you know, I'm proud to have been one of the first people big-timed by the, uh, the dumb zone. You're not even close to one of the first people. <laughs> no. Well, you know, yeah. at least... This my, happens all the time. I know, but let me let me run with this story. He's got a Cowboys hat that's really cool in the logo, except it's in Commander's colors, and I have a problem with it. Yeah, there, there's been a lot of confusion twice now. I have a problem with you saying Commanders and not accepting the history of the Engines. <laughs> Aren't, isn't there like a petition going around to get them renamed the Redskins? I'm sure there is. Wouldn't that be funny? That's not going to happen, though, is it? No. They'd have to bring Ron Rivera back and everything. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think they. Yeah, I think once FedEx says change your name, you change your name. <clears throat> so Matt Rosenbrosen, Rosenbloom, <laughs> yes sir, is uh, sitting in. He uh, it's a class system here, so he gets the couch. Mm-hmm. Um, also today, we will hear from intern Rachel, as she is uh, up here with her husband Colin. And uh, she is here to talk about her experience as an intern for the Dumb Zone. Oh, no. Some say she was the first <laughs> intern ever. 
with the dumb zone. But we're still looking into that. And uh, we also have the husband of Liz Griffin. Everybody knows Liz Griffin, so I probably don't even need to say who she is. But she's one of our Dream Team uh, attorneys. And uh, he is named Ryan. And he is here with his life partner, Patat. <laughs> is, that your, uh, is that your buddy? Yeah. Okay. Liz I, thought, is the attorney. I thought you brought him. You seem to walk in at the same time. Liz is the attorney that will hand you an ice pack if you have a panic attack in court, among other things. Yeah. She's not the one that will tell you to sack up. <laughs> Who's that? We got those she guys. kind of did that too. That's but... probably more of a Philip. Yeah. Uh, Frank is more down the middle guy. Like, he can see both sides. Philip's a, uh, there is no risk too big. Let's do it all. We're going to go right up to the edge here. Liz is a, I don't know, possibly that's, we should look at that from all angles. And then uh, Frank is like, look, I can see both sides of this. And, uh, but anyway, they all worked really, really well together, I thought. Um, so well, that's who's for being here. Happy late who's... birthday. Oh, is this a Ryan birthday thing? Yes. Okay. Who shares a birthday? Oh, you share with Jake? Oh, right on. How about that's that? The day after. The day right. after. Look at us. <laughs> well, Who would have thought? Isn't that sweet? We're all Virgos? Yeah. What are we? Leo. Leo? Yeah. Okay. Is this? Is well, then okay I'm to... sorry I mentioned Virgo. I know that. that you don't Bro. mix with that. Mm-hmm. Bro. So, uh, I have a small kid story for you. I went to the uh, Splash Pad on Sunday, as we talked about, a little water park. I think I'm going to hit it again Saturday in the window between Clemson, Georgia, and uh, Notre Dame A&M. I learned that from the Solid Verbal years ago, great college football podcast. Every week, you got to find the window. It's very unlikely that you're going to get 14 hours of college football where your wife just doesn't expect you to do anything at all. But if you can say, like, all right, from, like, 2.30 to 6, 6.30 or something, let's... Are let's, you like, I got to see second half of games, or do I got to see the whole game? Uh, night games, let's go whole game, yeah. right? I mean, it's a night game. By, by 7 o'clock, I should be able to post up. Okay. Um, so, always look for that window. Some weeks, you're just going to have to tell them this week there is no window. It's just a simple fact. Um, but uh, I talked on Monday, when you weren't here, Dan, about... Uh, I saw a kid, like, really bullying another kid. He was clearly, like, the cool kid in the group. Uh, and he was just dicking with another kid. It really bothered me. How old? They were in sixth grade, I came to find out. Okay. So it was a group of probably, like, six boys. And one of them was clearly, like, the ringleader. And uh, there was uh, another kid who was, you know, in the group but on the outskirts. And he was kept, like, dunking him under the water. And then that kid went over and sat by himself. And um, the ringleader sent one of his minions to go tell the kid he wanted to talk to him. Oh, I'd already heard the kid say to him, uh, why don't you like me? And the ringleader kid said something to the fact of like, I just don't like talking to you. Yeah. And the kid slumped off. And so someone sends someone over. is like, hey, he wants to talk to you. I observed all this. And the kid comes over and a uh, ringleader kid, now they're outside of the pool, just has a cup of water, throws it in his face. Hmm. And you're like, God, this is sad. So you're watching all this saying... Yeah, and then should I step in? And then later, a uh, uh, kid who is getting bullied is sitting with the uh, the messenger kid who had come over. He's kind of the Frank here uh, to talk to him, and they both had a ice cream sandwich. And ringleader kid walks over to talk to him again and just grabs the kid's sandwich and starts eating it. Mm. And I was like, man, I'm about to fuck this kid up. <laughs> and I said something to my wife, and she was like, you should say something to him. And I'm like, how's that gonna go? I did say something, though, to the lifeguard, which then when felt he like the ultimate narc move. And she was like, I've already been getting on him and his crew for pool etiquette. And how old is the lifeguard? This was an adult. Like oh, okay. not a, this was like a 40-year-old lady. Okay. 50-year-old not... lady, maybe. Okay. Uh, then that's... Yeah, I wouldn't have walked up to a... 17-year-old? Uh... No, I would have just handled that. But, uh, you know, Excuse the kid me, who... Devin with a Y? The whole day, uh... they're just like, hey, uh, can you stop running? They blow the whistle, and he's just basically like... Yeah. No, I fuck you. Um, but the other thing that happened that day was uh, my daughter started playing with this other little girl, and like we were over in the shallower area, and they have like these they they're like water balloons that open up, so you can reuse them. I've never seen them before, but they're like they're rubber, 
and you can just yeah they're magnetic so you open them up and then you fill them up with water and you can squeeze them and throw them and they were playing with those that little girl had a couple of them she started playing with nora uh i'm gonna say this little girl was like of dominican descent her mom who we started talking to who lives in the neighborhood was some sort of latina but she was much lighter like closer to my complexion the daughter was much darker and uh when we got back over, we were getting ready to leave. This is the first time I've ever interfaced with something like this. We were sitting there, like, drying off and stuff, and my daughter goes, does your brain determine how you look? And I was like, uh, I don't know. I guess it depends. What do you mean? And she goes, does your brain decide what color your skin is? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what are we getting at there? She was just like, hey, I noticed this little girl is, you know, and she had, like I told you, I mean, her, if you look at her classroom picture from Montessori, like half the class is Asian. Yeah. But I guess that doesn't jump out at her as much. Um, and, you know, she's played with like darker complected kids before, but she was younger. And so think, was she insinuating the kid was not smart or was No, no, no. I think smart. she was trying to decide what, ha- like, how does that, she mm-hmm. doesn't really understand what your brain means. Yeah. And so she's like, well, does your brain... She's not saying... You're taking it to a level that she doesn't understand. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying she was like, hey, why do I look this way and her look that way? And her way of saying it was, does your brain determine what color your skin is? Yeah, okay. And I'm like, yeah... Okay, she's not saying level of intelligence. No, she's just asking, how did this happen? Darkness of skin, okay, yeah. Because we tell her like, oh, your thoughts, you know, that's your brain. Your brain just determines how you feel and things like that. And so... They actually know your wiener does. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, I was just like, well, like, look at your skin and look at mine. And I'm much darker than her. Uh-huh. And I'm like, you know, everybody's just looks different. It doesn't really, you know, everyone. And I skated pretty simply on that one, but it kind of let me know that there's some questions coming. Yeah, and you're not going to have the answers. So it's just you got to see how long you could BS her until... She actually knows that you've been lying all this time. Well, what, I mean, what am I going to do? Get into like genetics? Yeah, so I, don't I was just know. like, yeah, I just everyone's different. That's the easiest and truest answer you can give. Yeah, I think everyone's different, but we're the best. <laughs> That's kind of the message. and me over you because you're a woman. <laughs> That's right. You just, you'll understand someday. Here's seventy percent of this sandwich. Oh, look at this. I have 70% of a bag of chips for you. So I have a yay boo uh, tonight. Yes, sir. Book book club? Wife has uh, neighborhood ladies uh, night. Uh, Yeah, they're doing some of that. Probably, I don't know. No, that's for you, big dog. Oh, me. And uh, that's the yay, obviously. It's going to have to be a pretty big boo. The boo is tonight... At 8 o'clock is the... Ah, uh, oh, the Landry Cup. No, no, no. Okay. Not that fantasy draft. The SNL draft. The SNL fantasy uh. draft, which is almost worse because, I don't know, besides three or four names, <laughs> it's a 10-team uh, league. We, we have to draft people that we think might be uh, hosting or musical guest for SNL this year. Okay. What do they have? 20-some shows? Yeah, that 25 about right. shows. Yeah. And it's a 10 round uh, draft. So there's going to be 100 names picked in the end. I don't know that I am 100 names into pop culture. I know that you're not. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. Maybe Tom Cruise. No, I don't know. That's who I know. Who did you? You had a- Kevin Bacon. Baldwin. Uh, no. Obviously, not. Alec Baldwin. I yeah. know the five timers. Uh, yeah. You know, you got your. Your Tom Hanks, you got your, uh, you know, I know Norm MacDonald won't uh, be there. You could draft him in tribute, though. I might just draft him in tribute. They could do um, hologram Norm MacDonald. Although it seems like we've gone, we've passed through that era. Yeah, hologram had a minute. It was like, like, it's not that cool. <laughs> for a while, though, it was like Tupac's on stage. Right, and he's going to, uh, Elvis Michael is Jackson. going to go on tour. Yeah. Yeah, we we tired of that very quickly. Well, think, That's why sometimes I look at AI and I'm like, I don't know if people are really going to always be that stoked on this. Eh, it is pretty sweet. Some of it's pretty sweet. It does your homework and stuff. And it can put Nancy Pelosi's face on like... <laughs> a, I mean, I've heard. 
So, I mean, I think your move obviously is you look at um, the summer blockbusters. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so just what movies are coming out? Everything that's coming out. In yeah, the but fall. that means I have to do that. It'll take five minutes to find out to then li- see who's the stars of each thing and albums that are dropping and uh, you know all that kind of stuff. It's like uh, okay, and then you know it starts at eight. And th- and you know what's going on? And it's a hundred names. Coach Prime. What do you mean? <laughs> Colorado, North Dakota State tonight. Oh my gosh! So then, uh, even if it's one minute each one, which it'll be more. That's a lot. This is over an hour and a half long. You'll be you'll be on for over two hours. And I don't want to. I got. Uh, I don't want to do that. Like it's like you know something you agree to three weeks ago, and then you're like, ah, oh, yeah, that that sounds fun. And then now is the day. Yeah, and the worst. I need a GM to draft for me. You're gonna pay another GM. Yeah. <laughs> You can't, you're gonna go. I need a pop culture GM. Reach out to me, DM me, email me, bracket Dan. You know you have a daughter, uh, two of them, in fact. I do, but they got. I don't know what they're doing. They could probably crush this. They might be able to do that. They could probably do it. I think I might have to use a, an intern. The problem, though, with this sort of draft is that it's not a select a set group of names in a pool. Like right. with, with fantasy football, you're just like, oh, I don't know, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, the, just the, look at the auto draft. Yeah. All right, next one up. Yeah. With this one, you're. You could you're even turn on ser- auto draft. Yeah, you're searching for names. Right. It's like a lot of work. 95 that. Yeah, and if there were no rankings in fantasy football, I don't know if people would know who to pick. Pass like the it first t- four it, rounds. It tells no. you, like, it, yeah. this is your best player available. Yeah. Right. And then you kind of see the next 10 available, and you're like, well, but this is the one I like. Yeah. This is the one I remember from college. This is the one. Uh, yeah. No, that's going to be an ass whip. And you're going to lose interest so quickly, you're going to yeah. forget about it. Well, this. it's all one night. No, no, no. It's I not mean, like you have to reset a line. I know, but I'm just week. saying throughout the season, you're not going to be like, oh, damn, Charlie XCX was on this week. Like, <laughs> Well, that'll be the time I will be able to follow it. But I, I don't know. I just think tonight is. Yeah, it's. I guess tonight's all what it's all about. And it should be the night that you're looking forward to. But now that it creeps closer and closer. Would it be a funny story if I just bailed and then they didn't have a, a tenth guy? Um, no. Why? There's, I mean, it's not funny, oh. but it would be like the Big Dick Hunter story where I bailed on them at, in uh, California. Well, you're like riding that thing for fifteen decades. years ago, but still, then we've had interviews yeah. about it. It's fun. We talk about it. And I respect the like fact that you a pulled a, an a hole move and have been able to turn it into. But look how much better this is for the. For the show, when Turley's yelling at you, yeah, wouldn't this be great for the <laughs> SNL bit? And then people will—it'll bring awareness to uh, Kevin Turner's SNL Fantasy League, just by more people are talking about it because I ghosted it. I guess, man. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. What could I pay you to fill in for me? Um, I'm busy. Three figures until about nine. But if you want me to take over at that point, I can. You're lying. I swear I'm not. I will. Make him do it. But I can't do much better than you can because I would say at least half the time over the last five years, when I see who's hosting, I don't know who it is. Yeah. Yeah, if you think I really care about winning right now, like right now I'm just like, why did I do this? Yeah. It sound, it's still, to me though, it does sound fun. But Well, then what's the problem? Because I have to do it then. <laughs> like it sounds fun if you did it and told me all about it. Okay. Well, there's a Blake sitting right here. What do you got? I'm not doing that. Yeah, you know everything about pop culture. No, I don't. That's all you're about, man. These movies slated to come out in 2025 suck. Really? What Fan- do we got? Fantastic Four, Captain America, Superman, Mission Impossible 8, Ooh, Jurassic Tom World Cruise is a good 4. One. These are all remakes. Oh, hey, what's the new uh, Nick Cage movie? Have you seen who he's going to play? No. John Madden. <laughs> what? Yeah. They tabbed Nick Cage to play John Madden. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Are you sure? I'm absolutely yes. a million I'm not going to go positive. out there on this one after right. the Happy Gilmore 2 debacle. <sighs> Do you think they'll have the scene where he won't wipe his ass with toilet paper? <laughs> that guy who worked at that I hotel don't, told us? but they're going to have a lot of RV stuff. And now that I've been in an RV. You get it? I get it. 
I would like to have a Madden cruiser or a, a dumb cruiser or something. And, but it has to have air conditioning throughout because it would be pretty sweet if you could just like lay down in the back. Yeah. And then, uh, you, you know, you're driven across the country. Ooh, Gladiator 2, Paul Mescal. That'll probably go high. Denzel. Denzel won't do it. Paul yeah. Mescal? Yeah. He's he, a hot. He's, yeah, he's he's pretty hot with the, the youths. Mm, probably The Rock because Moana 2 is coming out. Okay. I like what you're doing here. Fired up about it. Moana too, man. I think Nick Cage should be first round pick. Nick Cage should probably be on there. Yeah, that's a good call. All right. Well, well good I don't luck. think that movie's coming out anytime soon. I think they're just starting to work on it. Oh, it's not like 2025. Uh, but I'm not real sure. The I mean, Rock. There's already a picture of Kai Dramsey. Kai Dramsey. <laughs> you know what? And then the last two rounds is like kind of like wild picks. Like if they hit. Then you get double points or something. Okay. Whatever that means. I don't even know what we, we win in the end. Such a KT bit. It is. It's like so <laughs> complicated. God, like it's got it's got legs and it's got know, different no points. Areas, it's but doesn't honestly, have a winner. Not a payoff really. Probably yeah, not worth no it. Money. You get to it and you're like, ah, eh, we probably shouldn't have done this. <laughs> you're a jerk. Uh, but I was thinking of Akash. Uh, Who knows? Schultz isn't a bad pick. I was thinking of Schultz, but then I thought, well, you know, what if it blew up? Something blew up. Akash all of a sudden is in the news, and now in, you know, January or something. That would be a pretty huge takeoff, but yeah, I don't think that's... that's it's, it's, He's at least famous. Who's the lady that was on that roast? Nikki Glaser. That sounds like... Good She's one. doing the Golden Globes, too, so that's not a horrible call. Yeah. I think she's doing the Golden Globes, and uh, the dad from American Pie and his son are doing the Oscars, the the Levies. Okay. So that's not bad either. Who's the comedian lady that you told me about that had a special on, like, uh, giving a beach? It was Nikki Glaser, I'm pretty sure, right? No. It's a, diff- it's a different name for sure. Nikki Glaser's kind of hot. It's the girl from Hacks? I don't know. My it's my wife is into three or four of them that I've seen. Nikki Glaser was by far the funniest one, but I mean, she yeah. definitely has a joke about BJ's. Yeah, she has a really funny. Bit well, it was, on it was like her whole special. Was yeah. <laughs> Damn. Well, anyway, Wanda Sykes. <laughs> I think it was Wanda, Wanda Sykes. Sykes. I think it was Rita Rudner. <laughs> Paula Poundstone. Um, Ooh, Kip Spin. Yeah. So I'd like to do uh, a bunch of football stuff, but we should do a sponsor read first. You said you wanted me to pick? Dealer's Choice. The sponsor? Dealer Dan's Choice. Because actually what I have right now is um, what I wanted to do has really uh, never been done before. I didn't tell you, tell you guys about this because I just thought of it. But I've developed an in, innovation in digital advertising. Okay. Dan's digitization. Well, you know that uh, time is money. And I'm like, I, you know, I've always said that. Like when I said that, you're like, whoa. And you're like, oh, I should start saying that. Mm-hmm. Like time is money. And we're trying to consolidate things in this world. You know, you might have to do two different jobs now, Jake, that we're in this world. It's the gig so, economy. So what I'm going to do here is uh, a debut of something. Okay. It is called the two minute the two crossover spot. <laughs> you made it open for that. So this is a crossover spot using two different advertisers. All right. So let's just say, mm-hmm. for example, that you went up to Prosper Ford. Yeah. My God, I can't even believe... This place is pristine. I wish I could live here. Yeah, it's it's so nice. This used to be a field. <laughs> it was a field like very short, uh, three, four short years ago. So now you're there and you're thinking, this is great. Um, man, I wonder if I'm going to have to spend all day... You're not going to. They're going to expedite that process for you. They're going to make it easy, enjoyable, You know, it's that's very important during the college football season, Dan. Right. Uh, Spit your window. They've Not also, even the whole window. They got a bunch of TVs around there, too, so you Oof. can't catch some of the game. It's great. They got a little cafe. Love games. Yeah. Uh, anyway, 
So now, all of a sudden, you drive off the lot in your new, uh, what did you buy from Chaz? An Explorer? I bought an Years Explorer ago? that I love very much, and when that one's done, I'll buy another one. Okay, so now it's great, man. I can't, and you're just thinking. God, I got my man. hand. Hey, I, I think I have my hand out the window, and I'm doing like the, the, yeah. air, <laughs> the air wave thing. And you're kind of going through your mind, like, God, that dude, that sales guy. What was his name? Steve. Man, and then you see, oh wow, he just texted me, like a little follow up. Yeah. What a what a good dude, man. Yep. Everything was so cool. It was so cool to deal with their finance people. Like, just they made this process. Just so wonderful. I can't believe um, how great life is. And now I'm in this new Prosper Ford vehicle, and uh, you're just driving along, and, and it's, oh, man. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> My oh, goodness. Don't text and drive. <laughs> I was The tone has shifted. Quite a bit. You're looking around. Am I? God. Also, am I at Jurassic Park? <laughs> What you're doing now, though, is you're thinking, what should I do? You know what we should do? Because I wasn't at fault here. No. Um, but my neck hurts. Uh, what should we do? I think we should call uh, the Frankels at 214-817 and then 333-3333, and or, I'll talk to one of the partners there. Or should I call my insurance company? Absolutely not. They want to take advantage of you, all insurance companies, and the Frankels know that because they used to work for them. I would even say if your neck doesn't hurt then, it might hurt later. Well, you call them, and then they'll kind of direct you what yeah. to do. You know, that's uh, the move. If they're if they're like, yeah, call the insurance company now, but they'll they'll help you through this. Yes. So they are personal injury attorneys. They used to work with the insurance companies, uh, work for the insurance companies, so they know their tricks. They know that they're trying not to help you. They're just trying to do what's best for them. So you need somebody that wants to do what's best for you. You know who that is, Blake? Would it be Franklin Frankel? <laughs> That's right. Man, he's picking this up, man. He really is. And so now the tide is uh, kind of turning in your favor. Yep. You know, you got the Frankels on your side. You can have them fight for you, get you what you deserve. And then you're going to get... Uh, you're going to get a brand new uh, Grape Finder of Prosper yeah, Ford go, you're again. You're going to go back to fr Prosper Ford. Yep, that's, yeah. all, that's awesome. So what we've done is uh, we brought these two worlds together. The greatness of Prosper Ford. <laughs> you hit the post. <laughs> <laughs> and the greatness of Frankel and Frankel. And uh, we appreciate both of them. Beautiful. And their support for your uh, little old friends here at the Dumb Zone. I thought I could get this right to the end of that song, and I can't really. But that was fun, right? It was. That was awesome. Hey, now that uh, I know I've got this taken care of, there's a Brachiosaurus. <laughs> yeah. And this for, has been... For some reason. <laughs> the two-minute two crossover, crossover spot. <laughs> Did you cut that with a dip in your mouth? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it <Probably>. sounds like <laughs> it. <laughs> Can you tell? Yes. Well, once we'll do a th uh, three-minute, three-crossover spot if we can get a dip sponsor. Hey. I think they're on their way. I think they are. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> From the wonderful world of sports. The best. Radio sports scoreboard. Oh, yeah. I like that. Where do you want to start? Um, well, I have some Jerry audio. Hmm. We could do that. We have Mike Sando's quarterback tiers. We could talk NFC East. It's football time. So it's up to you. Let's you wanna... hear from Jerry. Okay, so um, there was some event at the Star, some fan thing. I don't really know what it was, but Jerry went to the podium. This was not a, uh, a scrum where you just have the quotes. It wasn't a practice. I mean, he's in a suit. He's at the Star, at the podium, and he did almost 30 minutes. Um, a good amount of it was CD talk, which we'll play some of. There's some DAC stuff in there that is pretty boring, to be honest with you. It's just, you know, Jerry being Jerry about DAC, but... It's I'll, funny when, when he... But that's like a headline coming out of this, right? Yeah, but it's nothing. It's just him saying, yeah, he's going to be... Here, I'll play you a tiny little bit of it just so you can hear yeah, how... Yeah, something else playing. I do? Mm -hmm. You know what I bet it is? W effing FAA. Is it playing now? Nope. 
That's what I thought. Let's see what this uh, is. Tim Kalashaw, Dallas Morning News. On the flip side of risk, historically, do you think there's value in having players playing for contracts and what that can mean over the year, course of the year? Well, it's easy to say uh, when, you're, when you're talking uh, strategy that you put the carrot out there, leave the carrot out there. Uh, leave the incentive out there. Uh, it's easy to say that uh, uh, if uh, uh, somebody has gotten pretty satisfied, uh, whether it be financial or whether it be over a good meal, that they may not go as hard as before they were satisfied. He's explaining the concept of hunger and then being full. Um, because usually when you eat, you don't eat immediately eat another meal, which... Is very insightful. Yeah, if you look at it, and so uh, that, that, that's an area that is tricky. It's uh, easy for me to say. Uh, I I seem to have my better times when uh, I'm dealing, frankly, in bad times, which are incentive areas to get out of the ditch. It- Okay. Again, he. I get what he's saying, but like, why would you want to put a player in that situation? And be like, yeah, you know, I usually do the best whenever I'm right up against it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even really care about the rest of this. It's just him saying Dak's going to be like here. Being in a contract year is good because it's. Yeah. He's. Uh, You're hungry. He's hungry to uh, be great and be better, and it's boring. He says, but it is funny though that the the point is you listen to this twenty minute thing. You're like, hey, there's better stuff than the Dak stuff. But every story about this, it's because he said one thing about Dak, and they make it a headline, and then Dak, Jerry says we're good with Dak. And then, oh, man, what is this? That's and pretty much all he said. And he, they said, well, uh, will you stop negotiating if the deal's not done with week one? And he said, no, we'll keep negotiating. And that's pretty much it. What would the point of stop negotiating be? I guess Dax people could break it off if they wanted and say, hey, we're pissed off, and now we're just going to focus on the season. Yeah, they could. You but, can always come uh, back at him. It's all performative. So I thought this was funny. Um, obviously, we had the article with Clarence the other day for uh, All City Dallas where Jerry you know, used the F-bomb and a bunch of other curse words, and people were real riled up about it. Um the, I guess sort what is of, all city Dallas? So that is the yeah we haven't really talked about it yet, but it's a it's a network that you know obviously we've known about this for a long time. Um, it's in four other cities. They have written content on their website, some of it for free, some for a uh, premium. That's like ninety dollars a year. They go live on YouTube every day with four currently four shows that are sports specific. So, for example, their Cowboys show is first. The other day when the CD news broke, they were in a star show with our friend Owen Newkirk that's an hour and a half, two hours of stars. Their Cowboys people drive back up there and get back on 30 minutes later because their shows are segmented as such that they're not like general shows. And then they put those up as podcasts, and on down the line we go. Wait, so Owen Newkirk, does he still work at the ticket? That I don't know. I would be surprised by that, but so that's he also, does That's also, um, you know, we've talked about this before, um, and also I don't care. We, when we worked at the ticket, we were told we were not allowed to have anyone on who didn't work at the morning news. Now, as far as how those rules were enforced, they were extremely ad hoc because, first of all, I worked at the athletic. Bob worked at the athletic. Um, Saad currently works at the Athletic, but whenever I wanted to have a writer on from the Athletic, I was not allowed to do so. Um, randomly, somebody would be allowed to have Tim McMahon on, but I was not allowed to have Tim Cato on. Uh, we wanted, but we were allowed to have Brian Curtis on, <laughs> who writes for the Ringer. None of it makes any sense at all. Yeah, the thought process was the Morning News is our partner. They built the app. They pay for the app. They built the uh, app that we use for Sports Day Talk. And so we want to promote each other. And so if they, if you are to, ha- if you want to talk uh, basketball, don't have Tim Cato on, have uh, Brad Townsend. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking Eddie Sethko, but I think he got hired by the manager. Right? He works for the team now. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, the point is, it was like a, a closed 
supposedly a closed little uh, bubble that you can only have people. Like, you couldn't have somebody from the Star-Telegram on. No, but you, you could, could. have somebody on from the Dallas Morning News. But you could pay Peter King, who works for another website. Right. Or so, you could pay Joel Klatt. No, it didn't totally make sense to me, and I thought it was a bad bit overall because, too, the Morning News would have a, uh, let's say there was an interview with Emmett Smith on the Musers one day, and there was an interview that Emmett Smith then went to the fan. Uh, sometimes the Emmett, the morning news would like just take a transcript from Emmett Smith on the fan and yeah. put it in, or they do an article about something that happened on the fan, which is fine. Uh, but then, it's got to cut both ways. But we would say, hey, how come the morning news doesn't? And then I think there would be complaints to the morning news about and, that. And then they would do it again. But to me, though, there shouldn't even have been a complaint to the morning news. This to me is uh, it's an old old story. Gather round, children. But when the guy, uh, he ended up running CNN. Is it Zuckerman? Jeff Zucker. Jeff, Jeff Zucker. Zucker, who uh, used like to CBS maybe at the time. Or well, he was. was uh, he came in as the producer of the Today Show, the morning show. This might have been like Katie Couric, Bryant Gumble days, and I think the Today Show. I'm going to probably get all this wrong, but just sit or gather around mm-hmm. for uh, for an old story. I believe they were not doing well in the ratings back in the day, and they had a very closed mind. Like, hey, let's have just NBC show stars on. Let's have the you know. And he said, you know, what we're going to do. We're just going to do the best show we can because then we'll get the most viewers. So if we if if a CBS show is hot, we're going to have somebody from the CBS show on. It doesn't matter what network you're on. We just want to be a really good show. And that was always my theory for that of, well, let's just do a good show. If the morning news guy is the best guy to get on, we'll get the best guy that we can get on to talk about it. And the morning news should do the same. If they got a story that's better from another radio station, they should use that. Like, yeah. We should all just build our thing as big as we can. I agree, obviously. And it's... ESPN it's, used to have that. It's correct. ESPN... Uh, the network, the radio network, used to have that, and you see how. Yeah, I mean, ESPN obviously is successful, but they would be like, "Okay, no, you can't go on." We would try to book somebody from the ESPN radio network, and no, I can't because you're not an ESPN radio affiliate. Yeah, and I always it, thought that it, didn't make sense. At for least them, in the case you of could the, promote ESPN on all these other stations, of course. Too, so. At least in the case of the ticket, I do get it because of the app. Like, they kind of have you by the balls at that point. If where, they're paying for the app. Yeah. But, like you said, then it should go both ways. And I don't agree that it should go both ways, though. I think the morning news should no do ways. the best they can to build the morning news. And But we said all that just to say... Uh, all City. All City yep. was asking Jerry questions. <laughs> yeah, so they have... They're a new podcast net, podcast writing... It's just a media company. We don't company. even know what it is, yeah. Yeah, it's just a media company. They do video, they do audio, they do writing, and they ran an article with Jerry where he's cursing a whole bunch. Uh, probably, I assume people know this, but a lot of times when you read Jerry quotes that were not in public, they've just, they don't even put like F dash dash dash. They just take it out. Like he curses nonstop. Like if you be around him for five minutes, you're going to hear 10 F bombs. So they've been cleaning it up forever already. And I guess it was shocking to people that they were just writing out the curse words. And that story just came out, made some waves. It's where Jerry's saying like, there's nobody that could do this better than me. There's nobody who could be a better GM. Just complete BS for you know, 2,000 words to Clarence. And Clarence had either the first or second question. And we all had a big laugh. Clarence Hill, All City Dallas. Um, what's, you name about your, the- what's the name of your outfit? <laughs> huh. All City Dallas. Thank you. You're kicking it off with some good stories? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Clarence. <laughs> Shit, Clarence. <laughs> Can you just talk about the, the interest in Dalvin Cook? <laughs> 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 what did he say? Yeah, I think he said no answers for you. Can you just talk about the, the interest in Dalvin Cook? In, in I have right no way? answers for you. <laughs> <laughs> interest in Dalvin Cook and in, in, in where you are in your right position. <laughs> Let's get back to it. We're having a good time. So we'll come back to that later um, because there's more all-city humor. But uh, More Dalvin Cook later or? Because what they do? They put him on the practice squad? Yes. 
I have some Dalvin Cook for you, and we'll also come back right. to All City. So they put him on the practice squad because they no longer have – you can put vets of any accrued service time on the practice squad now. So Carl Lawson, who's like 29, <laughs> they put him on the practice squad. Kind of like a minor league. Yeah. But also any team that wants him could – yeah, they. you would have to – it's different for every player, but yes, you would have to put him on the 53 at that point. If, so he's yeah. at least in the room. He's learning stuff. He's yeah. learning the playbook. You can kind of look at him every day. And, boy, if you're looking a lot better than – Zeke or – Yeah, I like it. It's a good Dowdle, move. Or, yeah, for What's sure. What's wrong with the practice squad? That's a great bit. Yeah. Um, it's Just that he's better than Zeke right now? He might be, but that will become – that's a low bar. Readily apparent if that's the case. Although Zeke has to suck so bad to not play. Yeah. That's the problem. Because he's Jerry's pet cat. Yeah. Um, I have no clue what he means by this. So I'm going to play it for you. I think he's, he think, thinks he's being clever, but it makes no sense. He could easily really help us out this year. He and Zeke are both 29 years old. How does that mix with, with what you're trying to do? And at their age, can they still Pause it. Strong? That's pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah. They're both 29. Yeah. You think, I you think, think of them as decrepit? 33, which yeah. is old in running back years, but 29? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's I now feel like the that's new old. kind of prime ish. No. For a lot of athletes. <laughs> used, yeah, used to be. Uh, I mean, I think you're prime. Running backs are more 26 ish? Uh, at the latest. I mean, Derrick Henry's 30, and he's like a supreme outlier. Well, he's only 30? Yeah. Wow, okay. That's right. Same draft as Zeke. Draft as Zeke, yeah. So, yeah, they're talking Cook here. He could easily really help us out this year. He and Zeke are both 29 years old. How does that mix with with what you're trying to do? And at their age, can they still be strong contributors? That adds up to 58. If you want to know, seriously. Uh, But uh, (laughs) uh, What does that mean? I'm going to play the rest of it so you can tell me. Like I left a little context. I'm like, is that a special number or what the? That adds up to 58. If you want to know, seriously. Uh, but uh, uh, really, uh, uh, we're in a great position to uh, uh, have flexibility. What is it? Where was the joke? Yeah, like, is he saying, well, I mean, we could have like a 23 year old and a 35 year old and it'd be the same? I don't know what he means. <laughs> Advanced statistics. Yeah, like, you know, everybody knows you got to keep your running back number under 60. <laughs> But if you say, oh, no, no seriously, be... it's because I was just joking about something. But what was he just joking about? I don't know. Yeah. He just, seriously, I got the math right. I mean, even at 58, I bet there aren't two other teams with two backs that add up to 58. Interesting. It would be pretty so, hard to find. So, I mean, both these guys are on the verge of retirement. So your jersey number 58? That's what to, I was trying I... to think of. I was like, what is it, Super Bowl 58? Is that... Yeah, that's a good idea. Numerology. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, And speaking of I couldn't figure it out, this one's kind of long, but CD talked a little quick interview for the Cowboys website and said, hey, you know, we, uh, you know, he put on 15 pounds. That's a big topic on Cowboys Twitter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if that's positive or not, because it seems like he was pretty great last year. Um, there wasn't any like, yeah. oh, he really ran down because he wasn't strong no. enough, or no. But they're gonna ride the ever loving piss out of him this year. I think it's amazing, even in his small stature, he hasn't missed a game. Yeah. So I don't know. He Maybe. also, I don't have the audio because I, I think it was in a, a, a scrum. He was like, "Yeah, I put on an extra fifteen pounds of muscle or body armor, if you want to call it that." Nice. Now. You may remember that we got some audio from our friend Cameron one time of Zeke talking about the uh, former show whenever he was on a shoot for the product that CD endorses, Body Armor Sports Drink. Uh, Very smart tie-in there. Okay. But CD said something like, hey, we just had to get in a room, clear the room, and have a business man-to-man conversation. And so that's Jerry on that. Nick Harris, DallasCowboys.com. CD said yesterday that you two had to have a businessman conversation to be able to clear the room. As the owner and GM, what goes into that conversation? And do y'all feel like y'all have a good relationship moving forward? Well, uh, I'm going to point specifically to one aspect of the conversation. And that is a uh, uh, just an inherent uh, 
uh, wanting to for, uh, and I think it's natural for all of us, uh, wanting to say, now you're going to be dealing with huge amounts of money. Be careful. Be careful. Uh, look under the hood. Uh, give it a lot of consideration as you make decisions regarding uh, what you have uh, as far as keeping it. Do you feel like he's answered the question at all? No, I don't know what he's saying. I don't either, but it gets weirder. Was he giving him fatherly advice on how to use How to use your money? money? It kind of gets into that. Um, you don't have to be smart to make money. <laughs> you do not have to be. You can be very talented. You can be very driven. So he's telling him... You do not have to be smart to make money. So he's saying CD... But you have to be real smart to keep it. He's very saying smart. CD's not smart. Any way that I can help a player in any way keep it, uh, put me in, coach. <laughs> but what... <laughs> The question was, yeah, you got in a room to hash out the final details of this contract. Or yeah, it, what, what was that conversation like? And he, he, so. And again, you signed a contract which everybody predicted would be the actual final total. He's making it ago. sound like he was worried to sign the deal that pays C.D. Lamb a lot of money because he's worried he'll waste it. Like, what are you, his dad? Well, he did see him with two phones on draft night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. But I mean, that's Phones pretty. Are a lot these days. Pretty common. They're everywhere. Yeah, I I just thought that was a really weird answer. Of course it was. But most of his answers just turn into his life philosophy. Yeah. Where he just starts spinning. There was one in here where he's like, "My dad told me," and it was like four minutes long, and I couldn't figure out a way to play it. My dad told me to be done negotiating by sixty, because, and it had nothing to do with the question. So. He also got asked about sports gambling. I'll paraphrase it for you. Um, it's clear that he wants it, but his basic answer was the public, like the public tide has to turn because it's going to go to a, probably a, a ballot or a referendum. And I think he he kept using the word priority. He's like, it has to be a priority for the population or for the citizens, you know. Organizations can throw all this money at it if they want, but if people don't care about it and they're not going to go vote for it, then it won't pass. It has okay. to be something people so really want to happen. Yeah. Because I think the public kind of, it seems like in general, they'd be fine with it being legal. I, I agree. But maybe not stoked on making it happen. Yeah. If, like, if it were legal now, I don't think people would go out to vote to make it illegal. Yeah. But if you have to change it from illegal to legal... Yeah. And it has to get to to a referendum. I don't. His point was like, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like that's the highest priority right now. Abbott doesn't want it either. Oh, Abbott definitely doesn't yeah. want it. I mean, I it's just, so weird too. Like whenever you see so much the, money uh, that goes get, to Oklahoma, and when you see the and not even that. I mean, sports betting they don't even have that in Oklahoma, but they probably will. When you look at like the ESPN Bet app, which from everyone I know who uses it says it sucks. It lists like 38 states. Like they'd be better off listing the states that you can't do that it. You can't yeah. do it. I mean, that's ESPN. You can't hear? No. I mean, that's why you have to use offshore and you know, that's why your bo your betting websites don't end in .com. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they end in Dot dot L not LV, dot LV or dot AG. It's a different country's domain name. Dan's about huh. to go to mybookie.ag dot dot AG. and figure out for the first time. That, How about that? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think VPNs work for... I don't think they do yeah. either. They, they, they're smart enough to know yeah. Like if you're in another state. They'll huh. let you yank it. But Have you ever like yeah. seen what your credit card charges you whenever you put money into it? It's like China. Mine Mine's went, China. Mine went to Jamaica. Yeah. I know it was difficult to get it started. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, your bank to, will decline it. Yeah. They send you a confirm, text. And I'm like, no, I really you? am a degenerate. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a difficult thing to get it rolling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I haven't like put more money into the account. Are you hey, telling me you're congrats. feeding yours? <laughs> uh, I may have. 
Okay. No, I, I've I've hit a couple good ones on there, and I just I don't bet a lot. I checked mine this morning, and it's at zero, so I just decided to leave it there. I took like the last two hundred bucks out. Last oh, you year. didn't get on the Cowboy Five and zero. My site didn't even offer that. Okay. I wanted to put a little money on the Bison tonight to beat up on Coach Prime. That's tonight. Yeah, I said that earlier. Can confirm. Did I miss it? You did miss it, yeah. boy. That was pretty, that pretty was big miss there. Thirty minutes ago. Still. <laughs> was right. thirty years ago? You see, Shador signed with Nike yesterday, and they had a they had a sneaker drop on sneakers. Oh, for really? His own show. Oh, wow! Day one. It was never going to be another way. Although for a while, Prime was Under Armour. Remember, he was like one of their brand leaders at the beginning. All right, well, here's how the press conference ended. If you recall, one of the first questions was Clarence. It looks like things are ending, but then Clarence has one more, and it's time to laugh again with the media, which is something we all love. You're good, Clarence. Okay, thank you, guys. Clarence, one more. One more. One more. One more. One more. Uh, how Terrence, is it Terrence? Got one more. Zimmer, can you think? Can you talk about Zimmer? Can you talk about Zimmer's role and some of the decisions you made? Yes, I can't be mad at you. I'm, yeah. <laughs> All right. Can you talk can you about Zimmer's role? Wait. They're wrapping up. I had to walk out. Well, no, 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 no. You got to like I that got was the hitter. question that I had to I had to work in here. Mike Zimmer's role. Well, he's the, the defensive, defensive coordinator, coordinator, so he's going to call the plays. <laughs> like, what do you, what do you mean his role? And at first he just goes Zimmer, like it's very tra- when it Trey just, just goes uh, Tony Romo. <laughs> <laughs> but I just love these little laugh sessions of and J- when Jerry says like, "Is your name Terrence?" You know, and everyone's like, "Ha ha ha ha," because it's not his name. You know that no one's really. We haven't been talking about uh, the thought that Mike Zimmer can slide into that head coaching chair if need be. Oh, well, don't think he's Jerry's not thinking that. Of course he is. It's going to Dion. You know that. Oh. I would love it to go to Dion. Dion and Shadur. How Terrence? Is it Terrence? Zimmer. <laughs> Zimmer. <laughs> so clearly, Clarence's story, Yeah. the first day of the All-City that has F-bombs in it, that that was the point of that story. We're on the map now because we got a interview with Jerry, a one-on-one, and Jerry swore, and we can print it. And you know that all like of the that's other... That's different than the Star Telegram. Or even the the Athletic won't do that. Oh, okay. I mean, they will, but they don't as a lean matter on of it. course. Yeah, I mean, that was a lean-in for sure. I mean... I wonder if they're... I'm not really supposed to curse in D Magazine articles. Are they... That's are they D-Magazine. trying to be show that we're that? We're that? Yeah, I mean, it's probably not... Um, I don't think it was a, we have to be that, but I... Definitely think it's a conscious decision. To put that in the first article? Yeah. Just to let everybody know we're not... We're not playing by the rules. Kind of HBO back in the day. Yeah. Like they would mandate that. The the notes would yeah, be... Yeah, need, need more boobs, need more cursing. Yeah, throw in an F-bomb, throw in a, a, a jug. And, and uh, you know how it works in that media room. The reason they're all laughing is probably there's a little bit of jealousy because from what we hear, they're paying quite well. And also, you know, you go up and you're like, oh, so I guess uh, over there you're just allowed to print everything he says when he's yeah, potentially two glasses in the afternoon when you yeah, so show that, up at the facility. That oh, was big around yeah, the, the media star. circle. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, Hard Knocks audio. If you have more Cowboys, we can stay on Cowboys. Uh, no, let's go to Hard Knocks and then we can go around the NFC East if you want. Okay. So if we have time, I don't even – what did we start about an hour ago, right? Yeah, we got a show tomorrow too, though. We got time for everything. I played this on Monday, and I don't want to redo the entire Monday show for you, but I do think you need to hear this because you said you've only seen the first episode of Hard Knocks. Yeah, this morning I was thinking of. I woke up too early, and so I was thinking of number two. Ooh, that's the first thing for me as well. No, 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 not that. I mean, episode two. And then uh, I instead went with the Connor Stallions. Nice. Untold. On uh, the the sign stealing scandal, and I've got a lot of thoughts. But if you want to wait until you watched it for me to uh, give you a few of those thoughts, so this is from episode two. It's before Caleb Williams' first start, and uh, you know, we, like I said, we played this the other day, and TC and I were talking about it. Like, of course, this happens. I've just never heard it before. 
as they're sitting down with Caleb and it's I don't remember which coach it is. It might be like their research and analytics guy. And it's just him, Caleb, and the coach in one room. Buffalo, first game. Yep. We're talking about refs. Not to confuse with all these officials, let's just focus on one of these guys. White hat. The white hat, Craig Rolstad. And he's been in the league a long time. He is a athletic director at a Catholic school in Seattle, Washington. How often do I see these guys? So on a given season, you may see, you may see some crews twice, yeah. or you may not see a crew at all. Um, it takes about two, two and a half years to get through all the crews. There are 17 yeah. of them. Okay. Um, so you'll eventually get through them all, but all these folks are all gonna have long careers, and you're gonna have a long career, yeah. so you wanna be good with them. Be good with them. Yeah. Like that they actually are talking about, hey, because in college, if you're in a conference, you're probably seeing the same refs a lot. They don't move around that much. And if you're going to play three or four years, now in his case, he played in two conferences. But, you know, just learning yeah, that's interesting. Learning how often am I going to see this guy. And yeah, I never even think about that. Right. I think about it sometimes when the media will put out, oh, this is the crew or, yeah, you know, they tend to call more sure. holding or whatever. Uh, but you don't think about scouting that. But also think about how, like, if you become an NFL referee, like it's a given, you're going to have a long career doing it. Even if you suck. <laughs> you're right. That doesn't really say that this is a, you know, because the NFL, it's famous that they're short careers, you know. It's just a, you know, an average of a few years. You get a lot of 10-year veterans, but there's way more one and done or two years or something like that. If you're not good enough, you just can't stick. But if you're a ref, just about in any sport, it seems like yeah, you're going to be there 10 or 20 years. And then I have one from this week's episode. So, uh, How do you like it so far? The I whole love thing? it. Okay. I really do. Because I know in the past we've said it's gone down in quality. And I would usually watch it with my wife. And she pointed out to me, she's like, this is way more football now. Some. And but I, it's also there's even episode one. I remember. It's, it's, I don't. I don't need the family crap. I, yeah, I, 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 I really. Know, I know you don't. I really don't think I'm. The, I want to watch behind okay. the scenes of of football. But and they're gonna camp, have to hit the family. I thing. know what family is. Yeah, but I don't know what the you know the rest thing. On, yeah, yeah, I don't know what working on the playbook is. The um the family thing you're gonna have to hit when the guy who's married to Simone Biles is on the team. Yeah, and they milk that. Oh, that was that was sure. interesting. Just but little, yes, yeah, that had to play into why they even did the Bears. Yeah, but I don't know. It's cool because I like Caleb Williams. Um, he's I I like him in the sense he's interesting. He's very polarizing, man. Oh yeah, I like uh like I think I think he's gonna be awesome. I think he's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah. I think you do, dude, and, and like. Some of the throws he's already made and like the little dump offs. He looks like Mahomes to me. It's just he's a different guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's today's athlete. Yeah. Air quote. Yeah, and that may be a problem, but there's gonna be more of today's athletes around him as he gets older. Yeah. Uh and I also like looking like uh Leo from the meme when I see my bu- uh sort of my buddy, my brother's buddy, Ryan Griffin on screen ten times a game. I just I think they're a good team and they're fun. They have three awesome wide receivers. Now they'll probably end up like six and eleven because everybody's riding them so hard. But this is from um, the end of the last episode. Austin Reed, who ended up getting cut and signed to the practice squad, he's the one who they're showing his parents in the crowd every game. He was playing when the game got rained out in Canton, so that's like you think about how big of a deal that is for you whenever you're a guy trying to make a QB3 job and you go out there for your first drive and the game gets rained out late third quarter. Like, that has got to be just crushing. I'm thinking, like, dude, I might get two drives a game. Now this one just evaporated on me. Yeah. Unless you're Trey Lance. <laughs> Unless you're Trey Lance. Then you get the whole game. You get the whole game. Just keep t- just keep turning it over. Let's see if we can set a record. So Let's Austin Reed chance. was great. Leads a touchdown drive, and he comes over, and he starts talking to one of his teammates on the sideline. And I think you'll quickly realize why I pulled this. Well, 
Come on, man. Three shots, baby. Three shots. I think I'm going to go put it in my bag. <laughs> that is awesome. He did keep the ball, look. <laughs> Operating at a high level. High level right One there. might say the highest level they've ever seen. <laughs> He's doing no Shane. He's doing Shane doing Trump. <laughs> Like, it's obvious, if you've ever seen Shane's Instagram, he's very popular in the NFL. Like, he was at Christian McCaffrey's wedding with Kittle and all those guys. Oh, really? Yeah. And he uh, is friends with uh, Gabe Davis with the Bills. Like, he goes out with him all the time. Yeah, I knew that. And, uh, yeah, Austin Reed's on the sideline, and he's doing the hand thing. He's, like, <laughs> operating at a very high level. <laughs> that is awesome. He did keep the ball, like... <laughs> Operating at a high level. Uh, high level right One there. might say the highest level they've ever seen. I was like, yes, I get that. <laughs> They're all awesome. doing it to each other on the sideline, too, the hand thing. It's great. All right, let's do a little of this. Hey, everybody. It's time to answer some of today's. I just have a couple mail. birthdays. I... Let's see. Oh, let's get a little tunage. Oh, then. <laughs> it's a much. little more than yeah. What is? Well, I'm gonna save that shot. I was gonna take a shot at Blake Me? for putting the levels too I? high, but yeah. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Would never say that. Uh, let's see. Do you guys have any? Um, probably the same ones you have. Well, I got some birthdays. Dear Uncle Dental Dan. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I hope this makes you uh, to you from the inferior Yahoo email platform. I was hoping to have my son Hayes' first birthday read on the show. His Hayes. leaders are the Roast Twins, Blake's disdain for eclipses, and Jake's lakeside all-you-can-eat buffet. Thanks for coming to Street Man to do a remote. Oh, cool! I think I can. I think I can do Hayes, but you can't have a Z, and I've seen the Z. H a z e. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or H A Y Z. I've seen H A Z E before. No puppet from Brandon. Oh, he wants a Blake drop. I don't think we have any. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think we have any either. Eggplant emoji. You like freaky s? Mike and Molly. Yeah, that bothered me. Uh, Storage wars. We are more important than a Jackie Robinson statue. <laughs> Lifeguard training. Uh, thirty minutes. Oh wow. Pearl Harbor. If the stars made the playoffs after George every Clooney. game. George Clooney. Chuck Berry. <laughs> Mark Jeez. Zuckerberg. Charlie Pride. Megan Markle. Ian Johnson. Billy Crudup. Judy Bloom. Kenny Rogers. Yeah, Hayes on a, on a pretty severe uptick in popularity over the last handful of years. I'm seeing. Not with a Z. No. No. Dear Uncle Hot Gash and the Moose Brigade. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, long-time listener, current Patreon subscriber, uh, Dan is my leader, I want to share some info with you in hopes it might get the word out. My wife, Erin, has been diagnosed with breast cancer. We have four kids and we live in the San Antonio area, uh, learning about surgery and treatments, it's going to be performed in Houston. Some friends put together a GoFundMe to help us make it through. Four kids at home. Tight travel expenses. Uh, anyway, I have a link. Did you get this, Blake? We yes. all did. Put this in the show notes. So if you feel like sharing it with fellow DFs, that would be appreciated. What if we just said, nah? <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like that. Yeah. Yeah, well, but he, all you'd have to do is post it in the show notes. Uh, you know. Mm, time's tight. He does say if you can't, please send good vibes. So maybe we'll just do that. I did that. Mm. I put in my good vibe cannon and <laughs> fired it towards San Antonio. Um, More Blake. Oh, that's why he's... Mm-hmm. Mm. Blake is standing up for him. And more trips in the DZRV. Then uh, he says, zip it up and zip it out. Zip it up and zip it out. From Scott Fowler. Okay, zippity doo da bye-bye. <laughs> All right, yeah, we'll post that GoFundMe. Maybe. <laughs> Blake is still looking for more love, so send Blake more love. 
But uh, yeah, we'll probably put it on there. And you know what? That's all I got for uh, birthday emails, I think. Let me see. Uh, let me just make sure nothing has trickled in here. I got this right before the show on my front porch. Should I open it live on the air? Live on tape on the air? I'm still trying to find this uh, female comedian I couldn't think of. It might have been Taylor Tomlinson. Oh, I think I might know what that is. Should I not open it? That no, sounds you should. Like it's upper angle. It's addressed to uh, the Moose Messiah. Yeah, I know <laughs> what this is. This is what happens uh, at my house. How does everybody get my address? I don't give it out. Is that public? Uh, it's not hard to find. And it's kind of a pain in the ass to get it hidden. Really? Yeah. Have I'm you sure. tried? Yeah. It's next to impossible to kind of remove your personal information from the internet. This guy works in data security. Privacy. Privacy. Oh, really? Yep. He's basically Snowden. Have you tried <laughs> doing it? Um, I've done the best that I can. Um, so the, good, the best thing that ever happened to me is someone with my same name was court-martialed. So when you Google my name, like the first like eleven pages are just this guy <laughs> screwing up. So just have someone with the same name that's do something that's horrible, yeah. and that's the best thing that can happen. It's quite an elaborate um, package that was sent to me. It's very well, well packaged as well. Um, what do you think it is, Blake? It appears to be some kind of a picture, and it's a of a moose messiah. Apparently, <laughs> that's, that's you. Holy, that's actually Dan yeah. as Christ in the center of a bunch of moose. Yeah, let me see that. Mooses. Now, mooses. are those full moose or the half moose, half person? Yeah, and then what would that even be called? Yeah, because there are ladies. A Ladies I'm just saying, and, like Minotaur, Cenotaur. Ladies and Meese. Yeah. Mooses. Look how badass you It's just you Moose. Look. You do look badass. Yoked Dan. And look Dan, how the ladies great. are really into me, too. You have like a harem. This guy's into me, too, though. Look at him. That's okay. You can mix it up. Yeah. You know those back in the day, they did that. It wasn't gay. Really? Mm hmm. Well, and the dudes should probably know how to. You know, <laughs> they know the finishing move. <laughs> <laughs> You know? Yeah. I know what you like. Yeah, we'll put your GoFundMe in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this is a different guy. <laughs> I know. So. Just... Well, thanks for the uh, actual mail as well. The dumbs up, dumbs up, dumbs up. When I'm at Cowboys Stadium or sitting at home, and I hear Papa John's Pizza for Jerry Jones, yo, it lights me up like a Roman candle with toppings and flavor almost too good to handle. Cowboys, five stars, what I get. It's like a Papa John's Pepsi, double threat. Get a Papa John's large with up to five toppings and a two-liter Pepsi. People are swapping because there's no better value. Y'all catch my ride. Cowboys, five-star combo for $10.99. You're listening to The Dumb Zone. <laughs> Gotta have that. <laughs> the wah. The wah wah. So apparently we've been on for over a year. And over there at the, uh, wherever we sell our merch. There's five days, eight hours, 19 minutes, and uh, seven seconds left. Well, I guess different by the time you're listening to this, right? No puppet. Thank you. Anyway, they have a one-year special. Like, uh, do you know what it is? You get a hat, a stain-imaged T-shirt. They have a couple different. That seems packages. disgusting. It's personally stained by Digital Dan. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> He's just in there God, staining I can't, I again. Can't. I can't do another one. And a uh, unisex hoodie. So it doesn't matter what you are. What kind of freak you are. You can wear <laughs> <laughs> However messed up God made you. <laughs> yeah, or whatever you're trying to change into that yeah. we're really against. Uh, you can wear the hoodie, though. This is a hoodie if you work at a pet store. <laughs> 
for uh, if your name is Cass or uh, Pat. <laughs> that really threw me. Just the the Cass Cassidy. Just, you could have warned me. I, no, no, I, 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 put I on, walked in the same thing. I put on cologne. Well, I, I brought a box me. of chocolates. I, I show up before you guys, and I was hoping maybe for a little alone time. Yeah. Well, there, little... there was another guy down there whenever I pulled in, and it ended up being one of his friends. And I'm like, oh, okay, like the boyfriend is here or Yeah. Something. And then he's like, hey, I'm Cass. And I'm like, instantly like, do I need to go through all the emails I've sent and been like, did I talk to this person in like a different way? Hey, son. Not? Yeah. Yeah. Sugar tits. No, because I asked him, <laughs> so did your wife book this? And he said, no, I'm Cass. I'm like, oh. Just the name Cassidy. I, I don't know that as a man's name. No. No. But I think he's right. Cass does work better. I've told you guys before, I had a friend growing up. I had a buddy, Blake, whose dad's name was Lacey. And that always just really threw me. I'd never heard that one before. What are parents thinking when they do that? Like, they know. Oh, it's probably like a family, family name, name or something. Yeah. yeah, that's always their excuse for sucking. <laughs> uh, we're at the portion of the program. By the way, we... it's dumbzonemerch dot com. Yeah. Oh, that's where you get the. <laughs> I knew it's wherever you get the merch, but I thought Blake will just put it in the show notes. Okay. Because that's what he does with everything. GoFundMe and now Dumbzone merch. Oh, I'm sorry that we're asking you to help with this Busy. lady battling cancer. I sent vibes already. Yeah, that was important. That's true. He did look a little low on vibes. He got you there. Uh, this is the portion of the program we, where we want to uh, welcome intern Rachel. Because... Do you have a mic? Yeah, there's a mic down there. Intern Rachel, for my money, has been one of the best interns we've ever had. She's up there. Here on the Dumb Zone. Actually, no matter what you do later in your pathetic life, Rachel. <laughs> Sorry. You will always be the first ever Dumb Zone intern. And the only thing not going on my resume. <laughs> oh, wow. It's probably smart. It's probably smart. That's Maybe sad. no puppet productions. Sounds a little. That sounds a little better. <laughs> yeah. Would you like my referral letter from the Dumb Zone? <laughs> People will be ruining the day when they made fun of that name. <laughs> As you can oh, see, yeah. the man is urinating on <laughs> terrestrial radio. I remember when I tried to look up the logo to put on my application at Arizona State, and like the Putin logo pops up, and I was like, probably not going to use that one to submit that's for not, the internship. That's yes. not an authorized logo. That was <laughs> just the, fun. The Bolshevik role? I, I say authorize it. <laughs> Oh, uh, the, the one sickle that Ty, hammer. Ty Walker made? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so yes, you are the first ever intern that we've had here. We uh, plan to have more interns, but you'll always be the first. What was your experience like? We kind of, th- you were right, I remember one of your first days, like Blake was gone. No. And all of a sudden <laughs> you were there. Her first day was even better. Uh, yeah. It was Doug. Townsend was my first day. Okay. Yeah, it's like this is what we do. And Chappie. Yeah. The we the Louisiana car salesman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a wild ride, and I was like, "What am I getting into?" <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was the week after that Blake left. Well, you certainly had yeah. So that's was one of your first days. Yeah, you're all of a sudden like a big part of things, and then of course I know you've uh, denigrated. Um, the message boards or Reddit. Me? No. Mm. Rachel. Um, well, Rachel I, will just be like, yeah, don't pay attention to that. Don't read that. And then, I mean, the uh, funniest part about but, that is, though, that she thinks she has to tell me that. But but a big thing <laughs> like you on... Should see I didn't tell you. I just... You told me not to. Because yeah, I did. it can be... But that's you're part not of used, the social media job. If you're you not know? used to it. Did you, did you get a little feel what it's like to be a lady in broadcasting? Because then when you go to that message board, it's like... Hey man, intern Rachel sounds hot. There's a picture, <laughs> or like in a lot of emails after that, it'd be like, uh, "My leader is the hot sounding intern." Yeah, I liked the one that was like, "Blake looks especially hot today," <laughs> and uh, I liked that when he was gone. Um, no, I mean, I think y'all are just still getting the footing. So it was really nice to like. I was 
I had a lot of fun with the creativity of like, you know, the six, nine day. Um, I liked just the Cowboys training camp kind of promos. Like I tried to get, it really brought out like my creative side and something I really, I loved pitching things to Blake. Yeah. If you have, uh, if you do follow us on the gram, doesn't, what do you, you do a lot of that stuff, right? You do the video editing and the, the little funny videos that have a, the captioning like yeah the little graphics that pop up like Blake does too though like I mean I like I thought of myself as like kind of Blake's team member you know like because he does some too Were you, would you say Blake has been your mentor yes <laughs> that's who I wrote down as my uh, mentor don't admit that and she's your mentee sure like everything Rachel is you have built she, yeah well yeah, I also would like to think that. I kind of built some of Blake <laughs> so I was like I taught him uh, about Adobe Express, which yeah. huh. that kind of hurt me because then he's like, well, I don't really need you anymore. <laughs> he's like, well, It's coming uh, for all of us. <laughs> so I was like, AI took my job a little bit. Um, no, it, it's been really like, I mean, there's, there's AI, but you cannot, the creative part that comes behind, like the inspiration, the idea of how you're putting it all together. Like, I just don't think AI can do that. Like what a human can. Yet. Yeah. I guess this is interesting too, Jake, because back in the uh, the radio days, when we had an intern, I knew everything the intern was doing. Like I just I knew how to do what they did too. Mm-hmm. And but it was stuff that, like, I don't know, it's not. Well, so I guess some of it is busy work, but it's just taking stuff off your plate. And then if they get good at that, they could do something that might we might use on the air and then have the confidence that, okay, if you give it to us on the air, I don't have to check it. I know that you've checked it three times already and it's going to be good and blah, blah, blah. And the difference with Rachel is like, I have no idea what she's doing. And if she tells <laughs> like, she's, if she's like, I can't like, if we had an intern in radio and they said, Oh, I can't do this. I'd be like, yeah, you can. You just have to do this and this and this. Right. I, I, this is how you cut that, or this is what you. But Rachel, if she says I can't do it or whatever, I just believe her. Yeah. I don't think I've ever said I can't do it, and I'll go home and take lessons. Like I will tell Blake, like, hey, if this is what you want me to learn, like to do the different colors, like I will just sit there over the weekend and go into audition and do an entire lesson or a premiere. So what did you do mostly? Like just video stuff or a lot of online social stuff. Pull. Yeah, Blake. I mean. Most is social. I did all of the TikTok, got that up and running. Um, you invented our TikTok? No, no, no. I mean, it was technically there. Okay. Y'all just didn't have videos on it. She like, probably, she probably, like, what, at least doubled our followers? I, yeah. That was... And I mean, like, I, yeah. It's, did we like have to I start said, with two? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say I've probably done, like, a hundred videos, at least. Wow. Like, maybe not, maybe more. And de- definitely all the graphics. Like, I did the one for... Uh, what was last week uh, the show that I got the lettering from, Blake? Oh, um, the Sopranos. So one. the Sopranos, yeah. So I had to like go. I had to learn how to do that and like grab. Oh, that was the, cool. Grab the lettering and like re go into like Photoshop and copy and paste and I mean, yeah, I've learned. I've learned a ton. Um, I think that that's cool too. Much like I guess some advertising, you would say, well, what does it mean? Like, what is that? We did ha- have a cool Sopranos graphic on Instagram or whatever. What does it mean in the end? Or do you just have to add it all up together? I believe that is what we go with. I think I like the Sell small details of things. Like, I appreciate the bits, especially, like, the deep bits. Like, some of the TikToks I would tag at Chisholm Trail. And I'm like, you know, my, not everyone will know that. But the people that do will so appreciate it. So, wait, you it. were at Chisholm Trail when you would do it? No, I would just no, tag it No, you just add the location as that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you can change it to anything. You okay, know, so like, if, somebody's able, if somebody is an insider, they'll follow that. And, well, they'll see it and they'll be like, oh, okay. Like, you know, it's a little nod. Like, yeah, just like any show that has... Little little Easter, Easter eggs. eggs in it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love the Easter eggs. Yeah. Rachel was kind of the annoying intern that if I said, "Hey, yeah, just if you wouldn't mind just kind of learning how to do this one thing," and then she would take like a weekend online course, dedicate ten or twelve hours to it, and then just become a master at it, and then like I, I didn't mean for you to take up your whole weekend to learn yeah. how to do this one thing. 
I wanted to really like I I like helping and I want it to be the best. Like I I really I sup- I love the dumb zone. I loved listening before I like sent in my resume just kind of cold calling. I even put like, you know, give me a chance to earn your business. Like I put that <laughs> on my email. Um and you know, I thought well, why not try? Like just shoot my shot and uh when you believe in like the company that you're trying to represent and you and you like the show yourself it's not as hard because it's like you really truly believe in it so it's not hard to sell you're saying that and looking at your husband and he's nodding and uh, so it sounds like these are conversations you guys had at home well i mean who do you think watched our son <laughs> yeah. i was like do you love the dumb zone honey because if you do you're gonna let me do this work okay <laughs> so yeah he watched a lot of stuff well the stuff looks great well, it thank does. You. Yeah, I've I've really really enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, I'll be I'm a little sad to go. So I mean, yeah, I'm I'm here if y'all want in the future. And it's been just I'm still in school. I have two more years probably, but yeah, this was a lot of fun. It brought out a real creative side, and yeah, I've learned about Reddit. I've learned about <laughs> comments, and yeah. well, you've learned that you sound hot. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that's what I read on Reddit. That's me personally. You can't get in trouble with HR because it doesn't exist. Yeah, we don't have an HR. Yeah, yeah. so for your future interns, you guys might want to look at some contracts before things, maybe some HR. <laughs> just maybe, like, if you're not hiring a fan. That'll be the last thing that we end up doing. Well, but you might need to a call contract? a lawyer. No, HR. You don't want paper trails. That's right. We can't have HR. HR is just there to protect the company, though, not the people. You That's true. Know that. It's it's very true. You do, do not go to HR. Yeah. is a general rule in your job. Okay, but as the company owner, you probably shouldn't tell people not to go to HR because that would be a huge red flag. Well, that's the reason we don't want to have an HR because yeah. we think it's hypocritical to just have something just to protect us. Yep. Yeah. So that's why we're going bareback, honey, because I don't want protection. <laughs> well, you don't trust we're bareback in the HR. You don't trust me? We're ba- yeah, I'll, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for years. Here's a comb. You can comb it out after we're done. Holy shit. What? I don't even know what you guys are thinking of. I, just, I hope you haven't said that to somebody. <laughs> Why would I carry a comb, Blake? Crab man. That's ridiculous. Not crab man. No, now you are. Anyway, I hey, think it's... Uh, it's Hot Spice and Crab Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. So I get a nickname from a uh, NFL All-Pro, <laughs> and uh, I get a nickname from... The, Just a story from your past. <laughs> from the uh, the students... What do you call it? The health center that opened at 7 a.m., and I was sitting on the doorstep <laughs> way up all night. Looking like a... Oh, Mangy I, dog. <laughs> the one Bait. thing I did want to say, that video, your one-year review, by the way, that was probably my proudest project because I did that entirely. Like, every... I think I had, like, 59 layers of graphics. Like, it was Where's so that? much fun. It's on YouTube. It's, like, one of the most watched videos on YouTube. But who's counting? <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> uh, those I checked the comments on because I'm like, man, I worked really hard on that one. Um, I think I stayed up for like four nights with like two hours of sleep. Wow, I appreciate that. But yeah, that one I am very proud of. Where can I find that? But I'm trying to look. HTTPS <laughs> colon slash slash YouTube dot The one year review? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that what it says? It's very good. Thank you. Okay, well I need to go find it because I can't see it. We'll figure it out. But anyway, I again, just thank you guys for letting me be the first intern. You can never have another first. So This is true. I popped the cherry. Oh, mm-hmm. yep. Jeez, call HR on this kid. <laughs> call HR. Yeah. And she brought her husband just so Reddit knows. Look, yeah. I got hey, a husband. Stand down. Get off me. Also, they love to, uh, they like to argue together online. They like to argue about the stars on Twitter. That I just don't understand. But they everybody's just, different. They can't do it when they get home. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't know. It's that's, foreplay. It's online that, that's foreplay. A for, that's a foreign land to me. They get home, you're already all pissed at each other, and now you can make up. <laughs> I think that's the point. And then he and oh, then he I, wish, I wish that was on mic. 
He may have. Sheesh. <laughs> he may have moosed. Uh, should we slide into the news, or what are we doing? Here? Do whatever the hell you want, man. Oh, okay. It's your show. Here's Jay really. with the dumb zone news. Um, this isn't really much news other than the FBI in Dallas and the Everman Police Department held a press conference this morning. Oh, you, that one, that's kind of a layup. Everman is? It's like within the Fort Worth School District, isn't it? Yeah, but most of the schools I know are local. Everman, what are they? Bulldogs. I'm impressed. Thank you. Sorry about Jake. Well, you're going to be impressed with all of them. I should be the... Raise your hand if you knew Everman Bulldogs. No one in this room did. Okay, but I should be the clearinghouse because I know a little bit of high school football. And so he, if he's going to know all of it, you don't My know... My point is, though, the audience is probably like, whoa, this Blake... Lighter in the air. <laughs> unbelievable. I don't... And you're I, just peeing all over it. I don't think Everman people are that impressed by that. I don't. All right, right, we'll get your... Little story. Email. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys recall that last year there was a little boy, a six year old, who went missing? And. No, because I turned off the Amber Alert on my phone. This one is way bigger than an Amber Alert. Um, the parents and uh, the sister, or I guess it was like his stepdad, his mom, and his sister, all purchased. I guess the adult purchased one-way tickets to India like the day after he went missing and were gone Ooh. and have not been seen since. That seems suspicious, Jake. Yeah, quite. A month after he went missing, this is back in April, uh, some uh, people in the neighborhood called saying, you know, hey, that family uh, with the missing kid just poured some, some concrete recently. Oh, no. No. And they dug up uh, this concrete, and they found human r- remains, but they were not able to even match it to him because they were so not, he- not human anymore. So the kid is dead, and the family went to a country of, I'm going to guess, is it like $2 billion? No, it's, it's, I swear to God, I wasn't. <laughs> Why did you look at Patad? He was just in my field of vision. <laughs> you did look over at Patad and ask. No. <laughs> There's a guy sitting here named Patat. Okay, I think it's one. I think it's one billion. It's one. I, okay, two sounds way too much, but we. I think we have the internet to help with that. One and a half. I split the baby. So you just take off and you're gone. And are they? I don't know. Of Indian. I would guess. Their last name is Singh, yes. But they actually have a very confusing last name. The, uh, the I believe the kid's name is Rodriguez Alvarez, last name with a hyphen. The mom's name is Rodriguez Singh. So when she remarried, I guess she took the, the last name Singh. How does the, uh, the Mexican do that, or the Latin? The Latin. No, when I was uh, in Mexico, do they do this in Spain? The, it's a very um, logical way that they do last names. Ladies don't just get rid of their last name. Right. They're all hyphenated, and the kids. So you will just know you could you could follow someone's last name through both sides of the family. Whereas here, you can only follow get... the man's side. Yeah, I don't know. I know like that Rodriguez Landy Singh Cabrera. is a funny combination of last names. My but. mom was Landy Cabrera Aramis, and I'm trying to remember if the dad was Cabrera or if the dad was Aramis. Well, back to you, Jake. Uh, a couple of other stories related to the children. There was a missing kid in Grapevine yesterday. That Amber Alert went off when I was on the phone with you guys. Boy, you want to talk about Did they about, check the cement? I don't know that there were concerns to that degree quite yet. But you want to talk about, I'm sure it's like this in, in every city, but in the little lily white suburb, if there's a kid they don't know where he is for an hour, everybody knows. Like, blast out from the school district, from the police department. You know, I don't know that they got anything else done yesterday. It's like, we're finding this kid. Did they find the kid? They did. He left home to walk to Glen Hope Elementary School. And something I learned is, 
they don't do the Amber Alert right away. Like, I think they wait until it's a few hours in where they're like, okay, this might actually be... Because it makes sense, because otherwise... Right. You'd be doing it all the time. My so, wife would do it for me all the time. You would do it for your iPhone. <laughs> you yes. To, his iPhone will just be under a piece of paper, and he's just tapping on his little watch over there. Like, where is it? Dude, my phone... The battery won't last, like, two hours now. Because it's, it's too small. There's no... Mm-hmm. I feel like I need to get a new phone... Or a new battery before we go to Cleveland. Because if we're going to go out and do stump something, my phone will be dead right away. I can't wait. This is going to be great because... So I was looking online for an iPhone 12 mini. They don't have... You're not... Mini? Uh, the 13 mini. At least upgrade to the They 13. have a 13 mini? That was the last mini. I had a mini for a long time. Weren't they great? Best phone they've ever made. They fit right in the palm of your hand. Phenomenal. It doesn't take up the entire pocket. You can put some keys in there too. Uh, right. see if I can lift this phone of mine. Well, yours is a big one. Uh, oh, it's so huge. No, How would I ever just hold it's, it in my hand like a size. normal person? That's a normal phone now. So Jake, I know. But now oh it's my, normal. Is that a, what is that? Jake actually couldn't pick up the phone. The Samsung phone. Oh. is a giant Yeah. Phone. He's got an iPad phone. That's the future. It folds. Yeah. A folding okay. phone. Yeah, we can, we can fold screens now. So, can you do... I was looking... At buying it on Amazon. Is that wrong? Should I not do that? That's confusing. Because it, it Cause seems it's pretty so spare. And he's an Apple it, Store vet, yeah. so ask him. I'm, I'm we, got a, a, we got an expert on the population yeah. of India. So, and, yeah. <laughs> sketch? Well, at least I, I, I won according to Price is Right rules. So yeah. I said one. Um, they Would have you a, say go to the Apple Store? They're not going to have them in store. The only way you can buy them now is like the certified refurbs. Like at the bottom, there's uh, like that a. That sounds spare. No, you get the same. You get the same warranty as a brand refurb? new refurb. That means someone else used it. Mm-hmm. There's, but the, it's going to have to be. There's none of those That's phones like a left. Hotel in, towel. But there's none of those yeah. phones left no, in someone, circulation. Someone else yeah. watched porn on it. Yeah, I, I can't do it. Well, then get ready so, for a big phone. Yeah, get ready for a big phone then. This is the smallest phone you can get now. Jake Hand struggles lifting here. it. Or what's yours? How big is yours, Blake? Same size? Uh, huh? Yeah, but no. I, I got no case, so it's going to feel... Yeah, regular phone. Okay, Blake's with no case is similar to mine. Still a little big, though. Let's see if we can fit this in my pocket. What's your screensaver? It's not even your kid. No, it's the Luca game winner against Rudy <laughs> <Lady Gobert. laughs> Respect. You have a two-year-old kid. Yeah, I see him every day. I, Kind of an adjacent story. I got married last year, and I was asking my friends how long before I could take off the photo. That was just me and my wife. Yeah, that's a tough one. You uh, kind of can't. You never, you can never set the precedent. No, yeah, don't put it on there to begin with. It, I, I, I did seven months. Oh, yeah, but then you change it. What's going on? <laughs> See, and that's I what I was. Gonna, me. That's what I was going to say about Blake. You're screwed because you have to get a big phone. So you can't. I can't button the pocket. Well, then don't put it in your the back, back pocket. pocket. No, that's where the phone pocket. goes. No. Who does wanna, that? You don't want to sit on it. Back pocket is the right pocket. Because Thanks. This Man, this is my guy. <laughs> you want to come in again tomorrow? Do you pee <laughs> sitting down? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dan's in love. <laughs> Let's say you got to park. How do you... <laughs> don't we just pull right in or... <laughs> See, now this one, then, you know... Why are you putting your phone in your back pocket? I don't know if I go jogging. <laughs> then just put it in the front pocket. I can't put it in the front pocket. It works fine. And then it's it's have obviously. You ever, in the have you ever pocket. tried the back pocket for an extended period of time? Well, I put my wallet in my back pocket. You have two back pockets, and I just I put my. It doesn't make any. This right. Make, then you have wallet, keys, money, phone. But nowadays there's no money. Yeah. So you, doesn't money go in wallet? No, that would go in my separate pocket. What? That was my four pockets. We branched. Wallet, keys, money, phone. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, that, no, was no. The, that was years ago, though. Yeah. Because I don't have money anymore. Yeah, I just have plastic. Okay. Well, anyways, you're going to have to get a new big phone, and he is screwed on that case thing. We were yeah. talking about this with Cass yesterday off the air. Why? What happened? Well, he has no case. So if he ever wants a case, we're going to absolutely case? roast him over it. No, he wants yeah. no case. No, I had no case up until a week ago, and I finally broke it. I've had no so, case for like five years. Yeah, a couple outcomes it. here, Dan. One, he drops it with no case, messes up his phone, and we can see it, and we'll make fun of him for like, why didn't you have a case? <laughs> he gets a case. We make fun of him for that. Or 
if he drops his phone and breaks it, he immediately has to buy a new one so that we don't know, and he can keep up the no case life without us. Uh, either way, he's fucked. Well, no. What you should do though is, do you have the Apple protection thing? Of course no. he doesn't. Because I never buy that. <laughs> no. So some credit cards have phone insurance now. So, like, when I broke my phone, instead of it being, like, $400 to fix, it was 50 bucks. As Guy long as you pay, stuff. As long as you pay... Are you married, Matt Rosenblum? I have been married for about a year. He just, oh, that's right. He just said he had the yeah. thing. Yeah. Because it feels like I would like to marry him. Anyways, this kid in Grapevine missed hey, his bus. Oh, okay. And he decided to... Uh, <laughs> he was going to walk to school, but he walked to a friend's house and fell asleep on the couch. I have a lot of questions. Like, were the parents home at this house? Did he just have access to this house? Yeah, and it's early. It's in the morning, so you're still tired. Why? You just got up. Got your day going. Listen, man. You could just go somewhere and fall asleep? When I was... Trust me. When I drop my daughter off at 7.30 every morning, 7.20, she could fall back asleep if she needed to. Hmm. And that's after being up for almost an hour. You don't remember how tired you were as a kid having like if you think about it they work longer hours than most adults these days especially if you play sports yeah if you go to school that's why you know what you guys are going to start bitching about someday like i did homework oh yeah like you've been gone for seven hours yeah and then they give you all this stuff that i don't understand and you're asking me to help you with it and it's eight o'clock and you've been working on it for already for an hour. And that'll probably fall to me. Yeah. It just exposes that you're an idiot. <laughs> Another scary kids uh, story, four-year-old in Dallas, who is, uh, Boy, this is very kid nonverbal and on the spectrum, <laughs> was left alone on a hot school bus for hours. So the bus picks her up at 8 a.m. And... She didn't get off at her stop, and then I guess the driver didn't notice that she was on it, and just took it to the. Uh, I guess they have like a bus depot where all the buses live yeah. overnight. The yeah. bus barn in Lancaster. I didn't. I was well, not aware. Just, I guess I never really thought of where do they take yeah, all, the all the buses. School buses got to go somewhere. Yeah, and the yeah. Kids, sometimes you see a big parking lot with just buses, and right? it's like ninety degrees. The kid doesn't speak. Mm. Yeah. But then they found her the next day? They found her, like, late in the day yesterday and had to take her to the hospital and, you know, evaluate her, get her fluids, because she was super dehydrated. I was in my garage last night. It was so hot. And I was thinking, I should charge people to come in here like they do the sauna at the gym. <laughs> like, it felt just like the sauna. Yeah, so we had this conversation, my wife and I, this morning, and she didn't believe me because, okay, I like working out we talked about this the other day. I like working out when it's super hot. You t- you too? Yep. I don't like being hot, just like, oh, we're just standing outside in the line hot. But if it's let's work out time, I like it being I like being super hot. Am you don't I like g- the nice air condition? No. Oh. No, and I don't even like having a fan. I like it hot. The garage gets pretty hot. But a couple mornings a week, I will go to the Grapevine Rec Sauna. Because it's right by where I dropped Nora off, and I'll just run and then do sauna. And why is that different? What do you mean? Than the garage? Are you about to tell me? Yeah, because it gets a lot hotter. Kristen was like, "I mean, what is it in there? Like 105, 110?" I'm like, "No, it's way more." Is it's, it? It's 160 to 200 in a sauna. Yeah. Yeah, but in the garage, you get the gasoline smell and you get a little buzz. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. So that's fun. But yeah, I mean, you walk the into steam a, room is cool. Steam room is awesome. And a dry sauna is great too. Or uh, I guess it's that's what that is, but I'm the wet one I like, which I guess is a steam room. The grapevine one only has the sauna. That's a little words with Jake there. I'm trying yeah. to think of there's There is no such thing as a wet sauna, right? It's just a steam room. Yeah. Oh. Only when you piss in it. Which like, I've done. Like Dan did as a kid. I can't believe you did that. That's so funny. If you do it right on the rocks, it really smells. No, I <laughs> it smells up the whole club, as a matter of fact. It's summer camp. I did something I very rarely do this morning. 
which is I held in a fart while I was in there. Because <laughs> in general, I don't hold anything anytime ever. If I have to pee, we're peeing. Is it guys and girls? Yeah. Oh. oh. It's not nude. Oh, no. But Any ste- sauna or steam room I've ever been in, I think, is just in the men's room already. Yeah. Yeah. Steam rooms yeah, like are almost rooms. always nude. But saunas, you can get the mix. I mean, I'm like shirt off. I kind of want to go to a sauna now. Dude, it rules. I've been going... I wonder if they have one at 24. They probably do. Yeah, most of them do. We I call mean, it 24. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Most rec centers don't have a workout have guy. You just... <laughs> yeah. call, it. But just call it a schwitz. Like the Russians? Yeah. That's what my What's people a schwitz? do. What's well. a schwitz? It's, you know, get a sweat. Like my friend, take a schwitz in the uh, steam room. They, uh, the, it, this comes Yiddish, to us from the Eastern of. Hemisphere. They're very big into the bathhouse culture. Sometimes that's where dudes meet. You know what I'm saying? But I held it in because I just thought, dude, this would be... Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's thick. It's t- it's a tight space. There were five people in there. Yeah, it just doesn't feel... It doesn't feel right. Were you afraid it was going to be loud? No, I can control that by expanding my anus. <laughs> Interesting. H-E-B is coming to Las Colinas. 2026 as we get closer and closer. Is that a big deal? Dude, it's I the hear... biggest of deals. Oh, really? It's so great. H-E-B is the best and I miss it. Is Why? That... So is that Central Market? It's Central Market is owned by H-E-B. Okay, because yeah, like they this... have H-E-B stuff on the shelves. Yeah. It's like the same food, but cheaper. Yeah, you get charged regular grocery store prices like Tom Thumb, Kroger, Albertsons, except they have awesome stuff. Yeah, because I've noticed, you know how I don't like the Kroger brand, whatever it is. Private mm-hmm. selection. So they'll have Kroger brand paper towels, but they're always worse than Bounty or whatever. So yeah. if they have Kroger brand something else, I just assume it's not as good as the name brand because the paper towels are so spare. But when you go to Central Market, the HEB stuff, I'm like, well, this is good though. Yeah. I will buy that, even though it seems to be the store brand. And it's a big store. Like any Whereas, store brand thing, you're like, ah, oh, that's not as good as yeah, sure. the name brand thing. But I'm not going to buy like toothpaste at Central Market. But they trick you at some places. Make the packaging nicer? Yeah, like uh, you go to Kohl's? No. You never go to Kohl's? <laughs> Do you think Kohl's just stinks? No, I mean... Okay, but they have like different lines of clothing. Yeah, yeah, like, I've, I've definitely, I know what you but mean. But clo- Cole, it's Kohl's, like I thought I was buying a name brand jean or something. Right, they can't just call it Kohl's brand. Yeah. <laughs> they, have a diff- they have a and cool name. And then you name. search it and it's like, no, this is only available at Kohl's because yeah. Kohl's.com yeah. makes it or whatever. But, you know, I don't buy, you know, toilet cleaner or toothpaste at Central Market. Whereas HEB has really good Central Market type stuff like bread, meat, Pre-made stuff if you want meals. Guacamole is exceptional. But you can also just go buy like toothpaste that's made like regular people toothpaste and not toothpaste made out of recycled materials. Yeah, like rock or something <laughs> that was harvested from a volcano. In yeah, Hawaii. Central Market doesn't have like a cool pharmacy. It's Yeah, you got to. Yeah. Too weird. And then uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. A 22-year-old man in Dallas was hit by a truck and knocked out cold. The driver did not stop. This happened a couple weeks ago. And the reason this story is notable to me is the guy was on a skateboard. Not a scooter. And I was just trying to think of the last time I saw someone outside of Venice Beach. Were, we, you, were you skateboard man? Yeah. But not. I was not good, like anything I've done. You know, I had friends who were like, really good but we would go yeah we would do it could you jump up and on the handrail you just kind of went down it and then drop drop down on the on the bottom is the word he's looking for grind Mm -hmm. is that what you do maybe a little 50 50 grind a little little kick flip i got to the point where i could give you a pretty solid ollie and one out of every maybe 10 times probably more like 20 finish a kick flip it's much harder than it looks to do is more than transportation. What's a kickflip? You uh, flip the board. Just flip yeah. it up and catch it? No. Oh, you flip it and then and jump then back land on, on it? it? Yeah. Which you to could do, do that, that? To do that, you have to back foot, weight down. Front foot is pushing forward, so that's how the elevation uh, arrives. Okay. And now on the front, 
with your foot, you have to flip the board and land back foot, front foot to pull that off. And I could only do it standing. So you've done it. I, but I couldn't do it moving. On video anywhere? I don't know. Maybe. I would think if I'd been working on that, I finally could pull it off, I'd want to video it. We weren't quite as video obsessed. I mean, we definitely got there. But now, I You're mean... You're just I, doing it for the love of the kickflip? It was all tied into like Jackass and CKY, which was stuff that you would get. You could get CKY videos, tapes, Blake, at uh, skate shops. CKY? Can't kill yourself. Can't kill yourself. That was the uh, pre the predecessor to It was Jackass, the same people, right? Except for Knoxville. Knoxville worked yeah. for a skateboard magazine. And I believe his first stunt that got him linked up, we're going to do a little history here, with Spike Jones and Jeff Tremaine, and then ultimately with Bam and Can't Kill Yourself. It was the, yeah. He got shot a bunch of times wearing a bulletproof <laughs> vest. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> and he was like the good looking guy who could be the front. Whereas like Bam and all his dudes were from, you know. I don't want to say backwoods, but like a pretty white trash area of Pennsylvania. Yeah. And then they got Knoxville and the rest is history. But it was all skateboard based. Hmm. But my point is, I very rarely see just a guy, like when we're leaving downtown for work, I don't just see people skateboarding. And maybe it's because it's, you're likely to get hit by a car. But yeah, guy didn't stop. Also, it was two twenty in uh, in the morning on Adelia. Like, I don't want to skateboarding victim, at two in the morning. I don't want to victim blame, but <laughs> yeah, you know, let's just see if I can take a cruise through Lake Highlands <laughs> on a skateboard. at Two thirty. Well, negligence wise, you're kind of high up there. Adelia and what? It doesn't say. Adelia is pretty hilly. Probably get some speed if you're going downhill. Might be fun. I lived on Adelia and Northwest Highway. Look it up. I'll do that. Right by Flagpole Hill. Yeah. It was definitely very popular when I lived in San Marcos for people to do the longboard. <laughs> Which you're not doing, I'm sure some people do, but it's not really trick-based. Like, we would go to the skate park, you know? Longboard was just kind of, a, it looked like a cool guy thing that it was probably to pick up chicks. Was longboarding popular, like, in Denton? It sounds like it. It does sound like it. You were not a skateboard guy? No. I played real sports. <laughs> <laughs> I never said it was a sport. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's your news. It's like the dude perfect. The I know, people are Olympics. debating whether they're athletes. Like Good God. Subscribe. Dude, I got to tell you, I went to dinner on Friday night, and that we just sat at the bar. It was like a sushi place. The dude perfect documentary was on. Everyone sitting in the bar was wrapped with attention. Like families, like they're not going away. People aren't a dude perfect, and I don't get it. Do you feel like Michael Douglas and falling down just like can't take enough? <laughs> that plus the big justice in the Rizzler, and I no longer understand the world. Nothing wrong with dude perfect. Hmm. You know what we should talk about for a moment before we do uh, Today in History What's that? is Early Bird CBD Gummies, mm. as they're all the rage. They're fantastic, unless you have to take a drug test. I want to be very clear about that. They have uh, 2.5 milligrams of natural THC in them, and uh, they're going to give you a little little good feeling. But you chill out. Not too much. Right. As one that has sampled them in the past few days. Oh, yeah? Rather than hit your two, three Miller lights just to take the edge off, or maybe if you're a female or whatever, you glass <laughs> of wine, just pop one of these in. You were looking a little slim. You know, you've been cutting back on the empty calories. Yeah, just pop this gummy in. Flavors are wonderful. Hits you in about 30 minutes, and then you're feeling good. And they're based in Austin. They're from Texas. These are Texas gummies. Do you think females don't drink beer? Is what are you what are you saying? All right, so uh, well, I'm I was, back to the, the wrong I was going to say, like, my wife will drink 
a glass of wine, but I didn't want to just say wine is just for females. Yeah. Because now, who are the early bird gummies for? Everyone. Everyone. Except for people that have a drug test coming if you, up. Yeah, oh, okay. You <laughs> got a CDL, that. maybe you don't want to. Yeah. But, what if uh, you're about to operate heavy machinery? No, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. They will ship to all 50 states, though, not just Texas. And, uh, yeah, they're legit. They make you feel nice. Maybe you're going out, hey, I got a big concert tomorrow night. Perfect. I'll be dipping into the old early bird. Going to a nice dinner? Early bird. Perfect. Flying a plane? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Will it help you sleep? It might, but that's these are not sleep gummies. Yeah. Okay. These are feel-good gummies. But if you've got overactive brain and you have a hard time falling asleep because of that, these might be good for you. Okay, so if you just have done CBD before... This is different. This is, this is probably better. Yeah, yes. There's no probably about it. These okay. are not your... Uh, got a little THC. They're not your grandpa's but gummies. But not too much. A little CA. A little CBD. A little Perfect. CBD, yeah. Go to earlybirdcbd.com. That is a website, Dan. Okay. And you enter the code Websites Dumb Zone. Websites are big now. And you'll get 20% off. What's the, the code? Month. Dumb Zone. Now, if I'm really not paying attention because I'm laughing at all how funny our spot is. And you've maybe just taken your own early bird. Will that be in the show notes? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, right under the cancer GoFundMe will be our coupon Well, don't code. say it with such disdain. And Start then, with one. Take one gummy this weekend <laughs> and uh, report back to us. Maybe leave us a voicemail or something. All right. The Dumb Zone presents Today in History. Oh... Jeez, dude. <laughs> uh, leaning over here. Okay, there we go. That's good stuff. Ah, uh, this guy. I don't even believe him. Who's on the call tonight? Man, that's terrible that um, RG3 got run. Dude, you know what's weird about you that? You had to pay him anyway. Pay him out his contract. I don't understand Let it. him just do the, the game. Because a source very close to... Uh, a source very close to ESPN told us that he was like a part of the meetings. Like when they were doing uh, like a two month ago. ago. Yeah. yeah, two months ago that he was on. And okay. you know what sucks? I'll tell you who's on the call tonight for oh. Colorado, North Dakota State. Mark Jones? Mark Jones without RG3. Th- some, those, that was a magical duo, man. Some spare former linebacker. Roddy Jones? I think RG3 was trying to build his brand too much. No, you know what this means. No. Probably hooked up with an intern or something. No. If it's this late in the game and it's this sudden, I mean, yeah, something like that. Yeah, but if that were the case, like I saw he was on Rich Eisen's show the other day, like being sad about it. If you get run for that, you go away. You hide? Yeah. (laughs) I saw him hosting a, a Call of Duty tournament. I mean, like he was one of the announcers. He's sad, dude. He don't need. RG3 set? I bet so, dude. I think he's probably... But tomorrow... He didn't get in under the no. huge, huge rookie contract. No, he was much later than that. But I think he's probably done pretty well for himself. But for Clemson, Georgia, at 11 o'clock on Saturday... Ted Emmerich? Greg McElroy. No. Oh, okay. Teddy's on his way up, but he will currently, this weekend, be calling uh, ACU at Texas Tech. Okay. He gets to go to Lubbock. Nothing wrong with Lovick, man. Let's get Ted on. Put it in the show notes. Book Ted. I was trying to think of if we could add someone else to pick games. We want to announce that soon, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next week, are we going to do announcements for the fall lineup? Sure. Big announcements Making that next up. week. Uh, We're going to Cleveland. I was thinking of Ted Emmerich, but then he wouldn't even be allowed to, would he? Probably not. <laughs> can't have a sports announcer picking games. Nah. <laughs> Today is Thursday, August 29th. On this day in 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast, bringing floods to devastated New Orleans. More than 1,800 people died. Yeah. So They bombed the levees. What does that mean? <laughs> Look it up. All right. <laughs> On this day in... Spike, two- Spike Lee made a documentary about it. On this day in 2008... 
Republican presidential nominee John McCain picked Sarah Palin. Oh, yeah. Worked out well. A conservative who had been governor of Atlanta, uh, Alaska for less than two years to be his running mate. Were you just stoked? Oh, yeah. Yeah. On what? Her. Just getting to see more of her. Because she's all hot? Oh, yeah. She's crazy. Yeah, it's good stuff. On this day in 2013, in a new policy statement, the Justice Department said it would not stand in the way of states that wanted to legalize, tax, and regulate marijuana. As long as there were effective controls to keep it away from kids, the black market, so they didn't want (laughs) African Americans to have it, and federal (laughs) property. They don't want inmates to have it. Now, as far as that first part goes, the uh, keep it away from being marketed to kids, would you say putting it in the form of, I don't know, nerd ropes and sour punch straws? It's really and, weird. And Skittles and Jolly Ranchers. Is that... I'm calling it like Candyland. Yeah, yeah. Does that fit with that? It's the weirdest thing to buy gummies. Yeah. That look like, yeah. <laughs> they should just be little things of broccoli. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Like, yeah. Like, it just looks like cauliflower rice. Like, yeah, that's that's a great point. It's like, okay, insane, so we don't dude. have I mean, Joe I'm Camel. Pro- right. Like, so we have a cartoon promoting something that's kind of gross to a kid. Yeah. And we say that's illegal. But we have, what if we package it and make it taste really good? I remember the early ones, though. I don't know if it's different now, but the early ones... They were all the same size. Somebody brought me back some from Colorado. And the only way you could tell is the package said, this is 100 milligrams, or this is 50, or this is 10. And you would come to find out, like, 2.5 is... You should probably start with something like that. But I think I started with, like, a 50. And it was yeah. Like, mm, because that's... Me to the, he's right. They would make, like, the 100, 50, 10, and 5 were all the same size. They all were like a Jolly Rancher. So you're like, okay... How am I going to break this 50 up? Right. It's, Where, that, it's that small. Yeah. And I didn't know. I didn't have any point of right. I had never right. done it before. I'm glad you made it, dude. Thanks. And on this day in 2017, <laughs> comedian Kathy Griffin, I was really s- glad that the uh, the softball game got rained out the next day. Because <laughs> I, was, I spent the whole night trying to write my name. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm like, I'm so messed up, I can't write. I'm just trying to, let me just do something I know how to do, and I couldn't do it. And it it was with me all weekend. Uh, Kathy Griffin. He arrived, at, okay, what can I do to try to balance myself? Let me try to write my name. <laughs> That's pretty great. Kathy uh, Griffin. Kathy Griffin reda- retracted her apology. So she... Uh, she posed with what appeared to be the severed head of President Donald Trump. So, remember she did that, then issued an apology, and now on this day in 2017, she retracted that apology, saying the anger against her was overblown. What a mess. She's full-on crazy. Haven't seen her in a while. I think she got sick, man. Oh, really? Didn't she? Wasn't she like the poster child for plastic surgery? Like she got new boobs and new everything. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I never. I guess what I'm and saying is, I never really front. thought that her appearance improved. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of her that way. But she does have. Yeah. Last time I saw her, she was bald, and yeah. I, I don't think it was a fashion choice. Well, that's not good. And on this day in uh, 2003, a uh, famous wedding on this day, Amy Poehler married Will Arnett. In 2003 on this day. Then they would divorce in 2016 after Will Arnett realized that she had a bag of nothing. <laughs> I don't really... I don't find her funny and... There you go. But I, 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 I was hoping they'd make it. <laughs> I want what's best for Job. Mm-hmm. Uh, birthdays today. Former Longhorn, Chris Sims, 44. Sorry, Jake. Did you Oof. hate him? Yeah. Because he took Major's job? Uh, he was handed Major's job. He didn't take anything. 
he was handed Major's job because they had made a, a promise to Phil Sims. Well, you had to. That's also a message to future recruits. If I promise you I'm going to start you, then I'm going to start you. Yeah, well, it worked out great. And I'm going to say he quarterbacked the worst loss in Texas history. Colorado? No. No, the, uh, OU, six, was it 66-3? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's bad, but they had a chance to win the national championship by simply beating a very average Colorado team at Texas Stadium. And the only reason it was close is because they broke major open midway through the third quarter and they almost came back. A win and they're in. And the front page of the morning news the next day had Chris Sims on the bench crying. At least I had that. <laughs> Former Cowboy Jay Ratliff is 43. But at least they learned from that. And uh, from there going forward, whenever they promised somebody uh, that they would be the starting quarterback, like, oh, I don't know, Garrett Gilbert, they then went on to not recruit Johnny Manziel or Robert Griffin III as quarterbacks. They could be safeties. Mac Was that all Mac? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Former Ranger Roy Oswalt, 47. <laughs> Barely. I think I confuse him with the guy that got high and crashed his little airplane in the Hudson. Is that Roy Halliday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Roy Oswald, I think, negotiated a John Deere tractor into his contract. That's a solid pull. I, I like I like what you're doing there. I completely forgot he was Who a did ranger. the horse? Rude Adore. Red. I think it was two horses. <laughs> Current Ranger Evan Carter, 22. What Man. happened to him? Man. Very hurt. hurt. Thought hurt he was his, the future. Hurt his back. Well, that's a good sign at 22. <laughs> <laughs> is he hitting like 180 or something? He's this year? not good. At least Leiter was solid yesterday. Dude, see, have y'all seen Kumar? Okay, so divert from the fact that Leiter sucks to yes, Kumar Rockers had a solid two months. Triple A? He just got moved to Triple A, pitched last night or the night before, five innings, 10 Ks, one hit. He looks awesome. Former Maverick Devin George is 47. You remember that? I do remember that. I think I always confuse between him. Between him and what's his name? Derek Fisher as far as like they wouldn't participate in a trade. Yeah, Derek Fisher was very short-lived. I think Derek Fisher was, I want to go spend time with my family. He, and he then immediately a, signed with the Thunder. He had a sick daughter. Yeah. And then was on the Thunder like two months later. Yes. And I believe Devin George wouldn't approve a trade, and it jammed everything up. Awesome sports name, Vi Sekahema is 62. Jamal Lewis, uh, Lewis is 45. I thought we just did him. Yeah. Today? Nah. Well. Recently. I could be wrong. Noah Syndergaard is 32. I worked out next to him once. Born in Mansfield, Texas. Mm-hmm. Bob Beeman is 78. Bob Beeman. For many years, he had the long jump world record. Rebecca D. Mornay is 65. Actor. Who? She was a hot in the 80s. <laughs> okay. Rebecca D. Mornay. Uh, hot today. The hand that rocks the cradle. That's one you should see. Really? You shouldn't see it. <laughs> it's like she's like a evil nanny. Okay. You know you haven't, uh, you haven't turned me off yet. She was. Oh, she's the mom from Wedding Crashers. Oh, is she? Yeah. That uh, Vince Vaughn is. She's been, she no. wants Vince Vaughn to feel her up. No, the other one. Yeah. Owen Wilson. Okay, Owen Wilson, yeah. Man, she's extremely hot in that movie. Yeah, she makes him <laughs> feel her up, and then she calls him a perv. Yeah. <laughs> uh, singer Liam Payne is 31. I'm going to guess something British boy band. Very good. One Direction. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's one of the lessers. That's got to suck so bad. I was thinking about that watching the NSYNC and Backstreet Boys documentary. Like, to be guy three through five, just be like, fuck, man. These other guys are extremely famous. Like, billion, 
type famous. Or not billion, but you know. So what you I mean. just never want to break up. You're just hoping guys? that it comes back around. Like the Backstreet Boys are getting some commercial money right now. In sync will play like uh, an occasional, you know, pop up here and there. I was actually thinking about that about the sixth dude from Dude Perfect when I watched that. Like, I really hope they took care of this dude. The dude that's not really in the group? He was. The video guy? No, no, no. The guy that they had in college who was in the group who decided he wanted to go to medical school. Oh. And he was a part of every. He lived in the house. Like, he was a part of everything they did and in wow. college. And, you know, they're talking to the main dude, and he's like, I thought that was so cool at the time that he knew he wanted to do with his life. And we were just kind of like, I don't know. Oh, wow. And I believe he became a doctor. And now they're all making... Twenty million? Yeah, at least. I hope they take care of him. They didn't. Actor Beth Dover is forty six. She was in Orange in the New Black. Is the New Black? Are you into that? I watched the first uh, uh, couple seasons. Yeah. I liked it, but I yeah. kind of gave up on it. She's also Nurse Beth on Children's Hospital. Which, if you've never seen Children's Hospital, I would. Hey, they're Realistically, like, say you need to see that. There's only like they're only like ten minutes, right? <clears throat> yeah, they're great. Oh, the sister of Ben. That's just bush league. Is it all all get out? Don't laugh at that. None it took you me. like a minute to come up with that. No, I was letting y'all. <laughs> letting us what? <laughs> I don't know. Letting y'all talk for a little bit. <laughs> I was sitting on it. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> and he's laughing out loud at it right now. Like it's really funny. Do you know there was a radio guy in Dallas named Ben Dover? <laughs> Do I know did, that? yeah. No. And uh, he used to work for Cliff. And he got mad at me. Because I found out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I talked about this on the air. I found out that wasn't his real name. Yeah. His name was like Ben Schwartz or something. And he changed it for on air. And it was Ben Dover. I'm like, wait, you don't change your name to that unless you're Wacky Morning DJ. Yeah. yeah. But he was like financial advice guy on Cliff. Didn't make any sense. And then he got pissed and like complained to Bennett or somebody about me that I was on the air making fun of his name. Yeah, I mean. And he's like, I'm a serious stir-. You know, He's in the morning news. He had a column. Like, yeah. He's been do- and I'm like, he wasn't a bit guy. Like, if you're doing bits... If you're Spicoli on the bone, you're, you know, I get it. Right. At least CBS 11's Ken Molestino was born, <laughs> was born with that name. Right. I would change that, too. Of course. But you don't change from something to Ben Dover and then be <laughs> upset people aren't it. taking me seriously. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, Brian Chesky is 43, the founder of Airbnb. People are mad at Airbnb. They are not doing well. What do you mean? Fees? Yeah. Um, so expensive. People are preferring to go to hotels because, I mean, last time I did an Airbnb, it was a five-page manual on how to take out the garbage before you leave and yeah, that's all that stuff. It was just a real beatdown. That's a bunch of bullshit. Yep. Um, but if you're staying somewhere with like five dudes, it feels like that's going to be a yeah, I think there's, better. there's definitely a place for it. It's not for the one-off, one person. Like, you know, that. what would we have done like on that Idaho trip? There were 16 of us. It's the only option. We're going to go to a resort. How much was that Airbnb a night if it was just one person paying? <sighs> was it thousands? It was over a thousand, but I don't think it was in the... I'd have to look. Right. It was a lot. It was a lot. And... Uh, Maybe 2000 You're like, let's come around from the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm, from you're, you've the been P. thinking that since I mentioned. Uh, Tom Six is 51. The director of the Peed? The writer and the director. Yeah. Of Human Centipede. That's kind of the type of movie that if you're going to write it, you have to also <laughs> direct it. <laughs> well, let's look for a director. Hey, nobody's picking this up. Well. He also invented, like, Big Brother. Really? The TV show. Which is still cooking. I've always wanted to give it a try. What is it? 
you just it's just cameras in a house. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you got to come together to vote people out or something. Yeah, and they have like small challenges and stuff like that. But there's hidden cameras, and they have to actually live together. They take their cell phones. Boy, I'd love to get voted out of that. Yeah, but I think you, you win money though. Still, once you're in there, you're like, ah, oh, this Dude, sucks. One time when I was uh, when I was living in Denton with my good friend, who was eventually earned his doctorate from UNT. There was a thing on Showtime called Big Brother After Dark. And it was basically... It was live. And it was uncut. And my friend, this is at a point where he was not really going to class. He eventually got it together and got the doctorate. But I was going to class, believe it or not. And he would stay up all night and just smoke cigarettes and like drink beer drink coffee and watch big brother after dark and he literally woke me up one night came in my room probably two o'clock in the morning and woke me up he's like bro dude you gotta see this i'm like what the fuck and i go out there and he has paused big brother after dark he's like you can see this chick's hole <laughs> Jeez. and it was just a chick's asshole like Let's use this laying there yeah, like it was not like it was. She was not involved in a sexual act. It was just like the Are you fact like you that, woke me up for that. It was just like a fact. The fact that the chick who's on CBS 11 in primetime, like, was wearing a like oh, a short okay. skirt and had no underwear on, or was like laying down. He's like, hey, because he watched the show too, and he's like, look, Big Brother, you could see her hole. <laughs> I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? And it was like in night vision. Uh, oh, it was yeah, like all that, green and black, you know. That's not erotic. But they would actually run it like uncut. I always thought we and should. And he'd watch it. Oh yeah. And he could be my doctor someday. No, he's a Joe Biden type doctor. Oh okay. He knows a lot about like the Middle East. Born on the stay now dead, John Locke says here the father of liberalism. Not the way you think of it. Oh. Like he's not hugging a tree. And- no. No. Vegan. Uh, Michael Jackson and John McCain. Oh, he picked his running mate on his birthday. Yeah, well, I like my heroes that don't get captured. (laughs) Died on this day, we have Gene Wilder. I think I underappreciate Gene Wilder. Blazing Sandals, pretty great. For sure, and I've seen some of of his... uh, Richard Pryor stuff. Blake, have you done Blazing Saddles? Yes. Come on. You know, I don't know much about Blake's dad, but... Uh, <laughs> my father-in-law. Okay. Are you just saying if there's a comedy with the N-word in it, he's no, I didn't decide to go that far. Just, you know. <laughs> Richard Jewell. Oh, horrible story. He got hosed. Yeah. Who... He's the guy who was falsely accused of the Atlanta bombing at the Olympics. Oh, that's right. He's a yeah. worker. Watch they that. Just they tore his, there's a movie yeah. recently. Yeah. yeah. Tore his life apart. That's right. I think they found his porn collection. <laughs> that's the sad part of the whole thing, yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, you live with your mom, and for no good reason, the FBI busts down the door, searches your house, and they're like, well, <laughs> he doesn't have any bomb stuff, but look at these pornos. Like, didn't he... <laughs> Wasn't he instrumental in like trying Stopping to help? Stopping it, yeah, yeah or like yeah. helping, yeah. Yeah, he's like, it. oh yeah, yeah. You, you found that awful quick, didn't you? Yeah, that sucks. And bring him young. <laughs> 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 he died on this day in 1877. And that was today in history. We're at that point where we get to closing remarks, <clears throat> as you probably know, Matt. Now, do we want to hear from uh, from Patad or Ryan, or are you? Would you like to at least? I'm sorry about Jake. We'll be upset Matt. that. We'll have Matt what is it? Sorry uh, oh, about you me. want to end? Or okay. No, I'll I'll. Allow You're deferring it. to the second half. Somebody I, go, uh, God Almighty! Okay. Uh, other guests, please. Okay, Matt is deferring. Yes. Okay. Now, this is Ryan, of course. Husband of Liz. Mm-hmm. Liz, our, uh, 
our attorney. Did she complain about us a lot or just me? No, but before I start, I have to say I'm speaking on my own behalf. These are my opinions. <laughs> Smart. I'm not representing the firm and I'm not providing legal advice. Okay. Funny. My well advisor played. told me I should say that. Okay. What do you do for a living? <clears throat> uh, I just graduated MBA. So I went to school with uh, AJ. Jorn. Your oh, doctor. okay. Yeah. My doctor's son. Yes. My fat doctor's son. Yeah. Yes. He's not that <laughs> He's great. Uh, so, yeah, graduated in May. I'll start uh, my job October. So I don't really want to say what it is. Okay. That's okay. Well, way to go. <laughs> He's great. This is a guy who's married to Liz. Yes. <laughs> no doubt. Watch what you say. No, I know the Reddit comments will try and search it out, so you know. Okay. You're but they're not he- they're well. not here, so I wonder if Reddit will say you sound hot. Eh, I doubt it. Okay. <laughs> so but no, I do have a uh, couple things. I used to work offshore, oil and gas. And you guys were talking about I forget how long ago it was, but uh Significant others weighing testicles mm-hmm. to see if they've been cheating. Yeah. Many people on the rig had that done. Damn. Many people. I knew at least three. Besides yourself? I was not part of it. <laughs> Liz didn't really want any part of that. Do you feel like <laughs> scientifically that's a thing that actually can work? I no. bet it is. I mean, we're offshore for 21 days. Yeah, but it... it yeah. Well, what are you testing though to make sure you're not rubbing one like, out? Isn't it important to clean the? Pipes? They would they would weigh it. They would like put it on the scale before they left, and they put it on the scale when they got home. <laughs> but I'm saying you're. Like, so are you I not supposed see, to rub one out? Yeah, you're yeah. you're upset that they're cheating on you is one thing. But yeah. Just kind of handling up on your own business. That's they that's maybe, no good. Maybe want to know like how much you've been doing. Like, are you just out there hammering every <laughs> yeah. the whole time, and you come back and you can't even register on the scale at all? I mean, some rigs have like eight man room so i don't know it's like college situation okay yeah yeah you just gotta like pull the curtain jeez put your plugs in mm. hope it's just a quiet night all right <laughs> um and then the other thing sounds hot <laughs> when liz came and she sat on the round table she talked about uh how she got involved so the dinner patat and i share well we don't share a birthday they're one day apart and so we were always we always go to dinner every year for our birthday, and so that's why Patat's here. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, Patat. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Who's first, been a victim of drive-by racism? Yeah, right it's okay. As, a, mem- as a member of the API community, I'm glad I can bring some. <laughs> de- I'm glad I can bring some DEI to this um, amazing podcast. Um, I believe I'm the first of that community to be in the sit-in. I could be wrong, but. Um, when Lynn less than one hand. But. He is the first sit-in, but we have had Akash on a lot, so... Yeah. Can I be true. racist? What's your trainer, Max? Uh, He's not Indian. <laughs> oh, I'm not Indian. Sorry. I'm, yeah. th- I'm Thai, so I'm yeah. the, uh, the Thai. other side. That's the, well, Max yeah. I thought he was, Thai. we were just going with the whole... That's yeah. the P- PI part, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. But, no, nah, but the, um, you guys were talking about Tom Kim a few weeks back um, as someone who's been in the military draft you guys should look up YouTube or um, TikTok Thai military draft It's there's some pretty crazy videos in there you can see Tom um, Kim the the golfer the South Korean golfer oh he okay to, yeah he, yeah, he was he was he finished yeah. fourth and he was pretty bummed about it uh, okay because he would have skipped the yes, yes, service yes. if he got the medal yeah um, we tied to also do the military draft and there's some pretty cool videos not cool, but you know, interesting videos that you can find on that on on the web. So you can get out of it there in you, Thailand if you have a certain. Yeah, so there's a couple ways you can get out of it. Um, one is if you enroll in a certain class in when you're in high school, and then for a couple years, and you can get out of the draft. But then, what they do at the ceremony is that at the end of it, they you pick out of a box a red or a black card. If you pick a red card, I think red card, you have to serve. If you play a back black card, you get away. So it's like a big ceremony. Oh my god! Jesus! It's, it's Hunger yeah. Game. It's literally it's literally like a real life. Game. And on the video, you can right. see <laughs> when you go up there to pick, they always have to have someone stand behind oh, you no. because there's people that faint all the time. They pick a red card and they just faint. So people, someone have to stand behind you and kind of grab you. Oh my gosh! And then, <laughs> and then there's pe- certain people up there of a certain looks that you 
So, and it's it's male only, but then you see people up there. It's like, oh, okay, they're not. You know, I don't want to play into a stereotype of Thai. Thai now, at this point, are they Thai. like in full on ladyboy garb they're, when they're I mean, pulling the they're car? Wearing, no, they're, I mean, they're okay. wearing dresses and stuff. They're female. Every Is day that like the most tourist thing I did in Thailand? Which one? I went to a, a show. Oh, I mean, you know, the ladyboy. Um, that's a. It's, it's just a thing. It's just a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, is it weird that I was aroused? <laughs> oh, some of them do look very <laughs> convincing. I'm, I'm, some of I'm, them, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, some some of them. A few drinks very into the show. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, no. Thanks for having me. Um, day two, I think I should have been day one, but it's that. I think it's that gap. The thing that you guys. A lot say. of people are upset about. Yeah, that. number. Yeah, seven. you were within 24 hours. You're saying. Yes, I am. I think I signed up the same day. So set number 763. Um, just you know, I'm glad. Thanks for having me. Um, it's pretty cool to see you guys live here. I've been listening since you know, not not as long as a ticket listener as some of you guys, but I've been over 10 years. So I'm glad to see you guys. Um, they're doing well. We appreciate and, uh, you being here. Yeah, just a couple, couple of nice things. Um, to say about each of you. Jake, Generation Kill is awesome. Thank I, you. I, I feel like every time you bring it up, it's hard to just get brushed aside, but it's such an underrated show. I agree. It's Yeah, it's always it's good to overlook because of Pacific, um, Band of Brothers, but it's an amazing show. Um, Dan, back in parking is awesome, and people who hate it just sucks at it. So <laughs> I'm glad I'm, I'm the team back in. Um, and then Blake, Lindsey Sterling's awesome. Thank you. Um, and then Halo theme song, awesome too as well. So, <laughs> nice. That's you. a solid closing comment right yeah, there. Yeah, it is. That's right, and now um, you deferred. Yeah, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, Matt deferred, and he's uh, concerned now. Well, Did you make the wrong choice? Well, I know, kind of updating a little bit on the iPhone mini brigade, uh, on the website, they have a 500, 512 gigabyte iPhone mini 13 available to order if you needed that much space. Okay, I... I've just found the 256. I yeah. might be pushing up against it these days. 512, Midnight Black. What do you guys do? 699. On I, what? On the Apple? Yeah, on the yeah on that clearance oh, store area. Look at this. It can be, if you order by... Can you four, put it in the show notes? <laughs> <laughs> if you order in the next hour, it can be sent to you tomorrow. Let's get on it. All right. Let's, let's do some work after the show. All right, no worries. Um... First off, uh, iPhone 13 mini. <laughs> You're How about amazing. that, guys? You're amazing. Yeah. Um, really big fan of y'all. Uh, really excited to have been able to come, you know, see Mozart paint, as someone <laughs> used to say, especially with a new roof. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Qualys. <laughs> um, and so I just kind of have some scatter shooting stuff from over the episodes. Um, um, Jake, I'm also a big fan of kind of strong, burly men giving massages because they can really knock out the the muscles. Do you feel kind of weird when it's like a, a like actual super hairy man? So you get those like kind of like kind of the the hair kind of gets brushed. Off I don't your back? know that I've had that. Is Gary hairy, Dan? Um, I I do not recall. I don't remember. You would know if feeling it were hair against me. Yeah. Okay. I actually have had a female. Uh, she was built like a guard who had uh, hair <laughs> on her arms. Yeah. Uh, um, two more things. One, uh, Jake, I feel like you get a lot of joy when you say planned obsolescence. Yeah, but I didn't say it just now whenever you did he was you uh, didn't. complaining about the battery. That is, that is very true. And then finally, on a previous show, I know the idea of Hanukkah was brought up. Did we ever find out, you know, it's like seven days and you're like, well, why is of it seven it is. days? It's oh, it's eight. Well, I'm a, I'm a terrible Jew. Um, but do you know why it's eight days? Do we ever, ever find out that? No. So during the battle, there was a rubble. There was rubble everywhere and there was a synagogue. And when they were going through the rubble, they found some oil. And the oil was only supposed to last one day. I bet it lasted eight. But it eight. lasted eight. Yeah. Mm. And so that's... Religion is so funny. It's, <laughs> it's just like, all right, well, let's just do this forever then. I mean, that, that's that's about the only thing I remember. I went to Jewish day school growing up, and I'm very much not a religious person. But, you know, those things are beating your head every year, so... That's the cool thing about it yeah. being a religion and kind of an ethnicity is that... You can just be like, oh, I don't really pay attention to it at all, and just be like, yeah, I'm Jewish because you are. Yeah. 
Whereas, like, I can't just fully renounce my white Anglo-Saxon Protestant upbringing just by saying, I definitely don't believe in God. <laughs> I'm jealous of you guys, is what I'm saying. Um, you weren't chosen for a reason, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't get Christmas, so you got that on him. No. No, and I wonder what happens, uh, like, when you get divorced parents in the Jewish family. Because, I mean, I got... Not only do I got Christmas, I got the new Christmas. Which yeah, you is got like tons of Christmas. Christmas. Well, yeah. yeah, and then Hanukkah. The only reason why we have gifts is because Jewish kids were jealous. Yeah, that would make. I've yeah. heard that before. Like that's yeah. the only reason why. And my family, whenever growing up, we would just do one big gift anyway. Like we wouldn't do eight small gifts. Small gifts suck. Yeah. Whenever like your parents feel like they have to do something small to kind of keep you happy, and you're like, you know what? Actually, I would have preferred we didn't. Yeah. Well, once you get to an age where you note that but when you got little kids your age it's oh it's easy now you yeah get a ton of you just go to kroger and go to the toy aisle and buy those things yeah yeah but, yeah those are those are the items that i wanted to bring up and again just, well thanks for finding dan a phone like i always yeah. wondered that about jewish kids too though why don't they just do christmas with a christmas tree a lot do i'm also not relig. you know like <laughs> a lot not like we're going to church all the time but we got a christmas tree because it's awesome yeah, uh, I, mean, I know a lot of a lot of my friends that are now married with kids um, who are, you know, both the husband and the wife are Jewish. They'll still do a Christmas tree because that's what the kids want. Isn't it hard for them though to celebrate um, these symbols and representations of Christianity, like a tree or Santa Claus or, <laughs> or, reindeer. or reindeer? Yeah, not really, because they're bribed with the, gifts. No, that's what I'm saying though. Is it like pe- if people are like, oh, that's Those weird? Exactly Why are they religious symbols? Not at all. Yeah. No. Not at all. Well, this has been the best time ever. <laughs> Rachel brought cookies. Oh, wow. Well, let's go dig into that. That expire on 9 11. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Never forget. Never forget. Adios, mofo. We gotta go before this becomes a zoo. Thank you for watching my video. Subscribe and type for my name if you want to watch more of my video. I love sports. Sportsman. I love sports. Sportsman. I love sports. Sportsman. I love sports. Sportsman. 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 But according to Jake, he's the mayor we deserve. I do. I admit it. I love sports. Sportsman.